I'd just finished my shift and was walking out of the coffee shop to head home when I suddenly heard a voice say, Hi, are you Catherine Mill? Ugh, what else? I'm exhausted already. I reluctantly turned around to a view that almost made me leap out of my skin. Standing in front of me was a girl with a face exactly like mine. Who, who are you? I stammered. I felt like I was seeing things. She smiled at me and said, I'm Tracy. Is this wallet yours? Oh, wow, you found it. I dropped it at the Seattle Mariners baseball game. I never thought I'd see it again. That's right. We met there. Then Tracy took out a cap and put it on. Hang on. That hat seemed so familiar. And so did that smile. Um, are you the one I accidentally bumped into at the stadium? That must have been when I dropped my wallet. I was in such a hurry to get to my seat that I'd gone crashing into Tracy. At the time, she was wearing that cap, so all I saw was her smile. But now seeing her standing here, it was like looking in the mirror. I kept staring at her as she said, Yep, that was me. In fact, I came to find you not just to return your wallet, but because I need a favor. Can we chat for a sec? Um, sure. Let's go back inside the cafe. What favor could she possibly want? Well, I was about to find out. Catherine, I'm just going to say it outright. We have something in common, don't we? I hesitated to speak up, but I knew exactly what she was talking about. She then continued. I mean, look at us. You're basically my doppelganger. Which brings me to this favor to ask for. Kathy, I was hoping you'd impersonate me. I'll pay you, of course. I'll pay you a lot. Before I could even reply, Tracy handed me an envelope and showed me a photo of some very posh-looking people. This is my family, she said. Wait, what? Turns out they were royals, or something close to. Her grandfather had been an earl in the UK, and then they'd moved over here to Washington. They're what you'd call an aristocratic family. So, yep, mega wealthy. Must be nice, I thought. However, it was suffocating Tracy, and that all of the duties that came with being from a family of nobility drove her crazy. Plus, one other little problem. She was in love with a guy that her family definitely wouldn't approve of, because he came from a normal family. Her parents had arranged for her to marry the son of one of the country's richest CEOs. And so that's what led us to now. She wanted to hire me to pretend to be her, so that she could be with her lover boy without troubles. I was stunned. What if someone finds out? I muttered and shoved the envelope back into her hands, saying that it was too much money. But Tracy just laughed. Oh, this is just the initial payment. You'll receive so much more. Please, I'm begging you. Think about it. Then she looked at me with proper sadness in her eyes. I really did feel sorry for her, but I needed some time. And it would be better to get my mom's opinion on this first. Ever since I'd been a little girl, I'd always talked things through with her. She was the only family I had, and the only one I could trust and rely on. Mom would know what to do. When I got home, I found my mom waiting for me at the table. We ate dinner together in silence, as I could barely focus. She knew something was up right away. Honey, what happened at work? I hesitated, then handed her the photo of Tracy's family. My mom, as you can guess, was shocked to see how much Tracy looked like me, and so I told her what had gone down earlier. I explained that she offered me a ton of money to impersonate her, but that it felt risky. I'd assumed my mom would be dead set against it, but what she said surprised me. That poor girl. Indeed, how people always say it's not as fun as it looks being too wealthy. But hey, a bit of extra money in your pocket couldn't hurt. I mean, you could use it to pay for your vocal training. And at the same time, you'd help Tracy, so that she can be with her true love. Yeah, becoming a singer had been a lifelong dream of mine. But because of money struggles, I'd had to put that aside. Mom's right. This was my chance. I had to take it, so I called Tracy to seal the deal. She was over the moon about it, and we arranged to meet the next day to start preparing. 
I thought I'd just have to learn all of her favorite things and maybe borrow some of her clothes so that I didn't get caught out. But no, there was a whole lot more to it than that. For starters, I had to take etiquette classes. Can you even believe? That first day, I had lessons on how to walk properly. They legitimately did put books on my head to improve my posture. And then came the elocution lessons to teach me how to speak more clearly. Seriously, was this Princess Diaries or what? But the best part, though, was her wardrobe. Wow, her outfits were to die for. Now that's what gave me the urge to dive into the royal life now. Everything was going well until we sat down to go through all of her likes and dislikes. Her dislikes were about a mile long. Oh man, Tracy was one fussy girl. I mean, who didn't like pizza? I basically lived off the stuff. Plus, she was vegan, gluten-free, and had a nut allergy. What did she even eat? But despite that, we got through the week. Every morning I had my etiquette classes, which now were easy peasy. I could totally pull it off as a high society girl. And then in the afternoons, I hung with Tracy and learned everything I could about her. By the end of the week, we got all things set and ready for the swap. So Tracy and I went out to celebrate. Catherine, look at our faces, she said while squinting her eyes. I took a closer look at the phone screen, and gotta admit, despite being pretty identical, there were still some differences between us. Sure, her cheekbones were more prominent, and her nose was slightly upturned, but with a bit of makeup, I could fix that, right? Tracy wasn't convinced, though. Listen, I think you're going to need to get plastic surgery. Wait, I wasn't ready for any of that. But on second thought, I guess that would be all right as it'd only make me prettier, which would totally help with my singing career. So I went under the knife. Not only my nose and cheekbones were fixed, but they also added a birthmark to my shoulder to match the one Tracy had. I looked like an Egyptian mummy with all my bandages on, coming out of the operating room. But when the day came to remove them, I was amazed. Just a little touch-up could make me look this incredible. I twirled around in front of the mirror in one of Tracy's glitzy dresses and just smiled. We were totally going to pull this off. Tracy was even more excited than me. She turned to me and said, Ready for the family party? Oh, wow. So my first mission had arrived already. I nervously looked at Tracy, and she just giggled and said, Oh, don't be nervous. It's just my cousin's baby's first birthday party. No big deal. Although... Thomas's whole family will be there. That's the family I'm meant to marry into. Okay, now I was even more worried. Tracy told me to simply do what I learned in the classes. As for Thomas, she instructed me to just ignore him, as that's what she usually did. He was used to the cold shoulder. <laughs> well, the moment I arrived at the party, I was already so overwhelmed. I couldn't believe my eyes. Her cousin's house was basically a palace with butlers and a grand staircase as you entered, just like in the movies. I almost had to pinch myself that I was even there. As I walked in, one of the butlers asked me to follow him through to the banquet hall. A banquet hall? How insane! There were crystal chandeliers hanging from every part of the ceiling, and the room looked like it was literally made from gold. I noticed Tracy's dad standing in the middle of the room with a young couple and a baby. That would be Tracy's cousin, and the baby was obviously the reason this insane party had been thrown. I took a deep breath, gathered myself, and walked towards them in the way my etiquette teacher had taught me. I greeted them casually, and it seemed no one sensed anything weird. Not even Tracy's dad. However, I was still afraid someone would realize. So I grabbed a glass of wine, and went to stand in the corner just to be safe. While I was fiddling with the glass and trying not to make eye contact with anyone, a guy came up to me and clinked my glass. Oh boy, the coolest, most handsome guy ever was standing there grinning at me. I smiled back at him politely, trying not to blush, and then I realized, wasn't he Thomas and Tracy, the happy couple? Suddenly, I heard Tracy's dad from a few feet away, speaking towards us. You two look exquisite together. 
Be good to him now, Tracy, won't you? Yep, it's Thomas, the fiancé that Tracy doesn't like at all. Okay, so I need to act cold towards him, otherwise I'll ruin everything for Tracy. But heck, he was just so good looking. I quickly walked away towards the dessert table and started stuffing my face with some almond cookies, anything to distract myself from Thomas. As I picked up a third one, I heard Thomas scream, and the next moment he was running over to me shouting, Tracy, put it down! There are nuts in those! I dropped the cookie in shock. Right. I was supposed to be allergic to these delicious snacks. Totally forgot that. Gosh, I turned around to see all eyes were on me. This was a disaster. I was like a deer in the headlights. Didn't know what else to do. I pretended to faint. Thomas immediately carried me somewhere while others called the family doctor. I only took a peek when I felt like I was let down on a bed. And wow, even their guest room is gorgeous. Anyway, the doctor did some quick checkup and said I was okay. Well, obviously. Then Thomas rushed over, holding my hand and kept saying, Thank God you're okay, baby. Really? How come Tracy didn't like him? He was so sweet. He was looking at me so lovingly. Wait. At Tracy, actually. Oh boy, this was getting weird. Guess I have started off this mission on the wrong foot. But having that first incident actually helped me become more careful, so I've been getting better and better at playing Tracy. I was like a secret agent that would be summoned by duty at any sec. Sometimes you'd find me as a princess, other times I'd be waiting tables. My life was getting busier, but much more fun in some senses. Then one day, Tracy suddenly appeared at my door, looking all loved up. How strange it was. Usually she only contacted me over the phone. Then she said, Kathy, I have a big mission for you. As she sat down, she put a bulging envelope on the table and said, Kathy, sweetie, I need a big favor this time. So here's the thing. Me and Arnold are going to Asia for a month, and, um... I was wondering if you could maybe move into my house and cover for me? I was shocked. A month? Um, that's quite a long time. I mean, surely I'll get caught. Oh, I'm not sure, Tracy. I tried to avoid her eye contact, but she kept begging and looking like she was about to cry. Oh, God. What should I do? Guys, please give me some advice. And stay tuned. I'll be back with part two to tell you how things go down. <sighs> Why do I have uneasy feelings about all this? In part one of my story, I met my doppelganger, Tracy, who just so happened to be from a super wealthy, royal blood kind of family. We made a deal, where I became her stunt double to stand in for her at boring royal parties so she could freely be with the love of her life that her family didn't approve of. It's just like a part-time job, which helped me earn some extra money to pursue my dream of being a singer. But then one time, Tracy came over and asked me to move into her mansion and play this princess act for an entire month while she's off to Asia with her boyfriend. That would need some serious thinking. How was I supposed to keep this up 24-7? I could already see myself getting so busted. Sensing my hesitation, Tracy pleaded again. Please, I'll give you whatever you want. This would mean so much for me and Arnold. You can do it, Kathy. We believe in you. She looked at me with those big puppy eyes. Oh no, what to do? At that exact moment, my mother walked out from the kitchen and said, You've been doing a great job so far, sweetie. I'm sure you'll pull it off this time, too. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Well, I couldn't say no now. So I gave Tracy a nod, which made her scream with happiness. Yay! You've made my day! Tomorrow, 3 p.m., I'll be waiting for you. Then she grinned at my mother. Thank you, Mrs. Mill. And so I moved in the next day. It was just me and Tracy's dad lived in this marvelous mansion. Yeah, as well as their butler and some dozens of housekeepers. You get the picture. Luckily, Tracy's dad was rarely home, 
so I basically had the place to myself. It was bliss. I didn't have to lift a finger. If I wanted a glass of wine, I just rang the bell and a glass would be waiting before I even put the bell down. One day, I felt like Mexican food and they actually flew one of the top Mexican chefs in just to make me a burrito. I could seriously get used to this whole royal blood thing. However, there were a few moments where I totally messed up. One time, Tracy's dad had a day off, so we ate dinner together. I was so nervous that I totally forgot that Tracy was left-handed, and her dad noticed right away. Sweet pea, since when are you eating with your right hand? I stammered, trying to make something up. Um, I've recently seen some research saying I should start using my right hand to train the left side of my brain too. Just experimenting, dad. Oof, that was close. But it didn't stop there. Doris, the housekeeper, came into my room one day and joked, Tracy, when did you become so tidy? If I didn't know better, I'd say you had been replaced by a secret twin sister or something. I totally froze, trying not to let Doris know that she had just hit the nail on the head. I laughed it off. Oh, Doris, don't be so silly. It's me. Check my birthmark. <laughs> I was kind of bored and just thought I could clean it up a little bit. But it's even more boring. Ugh. It's all yours now. I passed her my unfolded blanket and swiftly left the room. Each close call like that reminded me to be more careful. But other than that, my new life was full of wonderful things. Especially when I had Thomas by my side. At first I tried to act as cold as possible towards him, just like how Tracy would normally treat this fiancé of hers. But tell me, how am I supposed to ignore such a perfect man? He often came to visit me or took me to places. He always gave me all these butterflies with his charm and elegant gestures. And it wasn't long before I realized I had feelings for him. I just couldn't help it. He made me so happy. One night, instead of having some fancy eight-course dinner date, I suggested we try something more casual. So we went bowling and grabbed some burgers. We had so much fun, and at one point, he took my hand and said, Thank you for opening your heart to me and giving me a chance to be your man. As he put a soda can ring on my finger. Come on, who wouldn't melt to that? And when he dropped me home, he leaned over to kiss me. Oh my god! My heart was thumping in my chest as I got out of the car. Then he said, Good night, my darling Tracy. Suddenly reality came crashing down. I had been delusional. It was Tracy that Thomas loved. Not me. Not poor old Kathy. But it's too late now. I'd been so carried away with my own feelings that I didn't realize how my behaviors towards Thomas had been taken as a green light. Both families were super stoked that Tracy finally showed some positive signals towards this relationship and they started planning the wedding right away. The date was set for two weeks later. Then the plan was for us to move to Singapore for Thomas's work. I was so shocked at how fast everything was moving. This was a disaster. I called Tracy and told her everything. She also freaked out and told me to stay calm and just wait for her. She'd get back before the wedding day to stop it. Well, the wedding day was fast approaching, and there was still no sign of Tracy. I was really panicking now. And the worst part was that I couldn't get a hold of her. Her phone was off. I didn't know what to do. I cried to my mom over the phone, so she tried to calm me down. Honey, I think if you leave now, you'll mess everything up. If Tracy's family finds out, you'll both be in trouble. Hang on a bit more. I'm sure she'll be back and everything will be okay. But that means I have to go through with the wedding and then move to Singapore with him. I can't do that, Mom. Why not, sweetie? I know you love him. And so far, no one has spotted a difference between the two of you. Just keep pretending for now, okay? So that's what I did. I kept pretending. While everyone prepared for the wedding of the year, I paced back and forth waiting for Tracy to get back. One day, I was out in the garden, trying to ease my mind, when someone approached me. He looked so familiar, and I wondered if it was Arnold, Tracy's boyfriend. But what was he doing here? 
He asked me to follow him so that no one would see us. And then he seemed angry and said, Tracy, why didn't you tell me you were back? I was so worried when you disappeared like that. Huh? Wasn't Tracy supposed to be with him? Arnold, calm down. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. But Tracy has disappeared? I haven't been able to contact her either, and I've been worried sick. Oh, hey, Kathy. Gosh, you two are identical. Arnold looked disappointed. Anyway, we came back a few days ago, and she wanted to swing by your mum's place to give us some presents. Then I haven't seen her since. That's weird. My mum would have mentioned if she swung by. Yeah, I've asked her, but she hadn't seen Tracy either. Kathy, we need to find her. So I immediately cancelled my wedding dress fitting and went with Arnold to my house. Hey, Mom, it's me! I called out, but there was no answer. We searched the house, but couldn't find her anywhere. Then, as we passed my room, I could hear someone inside, and the door was locked. That was so odd. So I rushed to get the spare key to open it, and caught the fright of my life. Tracy was sitting on my bed! I almost screamed! What are you doing here? Tracy looked as shocked to see us as we were to see her. I don't know why your mom locked me in here, but don't worry. She didn't hurt me. I'm being fed well and I have Netflix, so it's not all bad. No way. My mom would never do such things. She was the sweetest woman, and this was so out of character. Then I heard footsteps on the stairs. It was my mom. I screamed. Mom, could you please explain? What's going on here? She looked at me and stammered. I, I just plan to keep her here for a few days. Just until you married Thomas and flown to Singapore with him. Are you insane? Do you want me to steal her life? No, sweetie, it's not stealing. It should have been your life. I mean, why didn't he recognize his own daughter? At this, she burst into tears and fell to the floor. Arnold rushed over and helped her up and said, What do you mean, his own daughter? And that's when my mum told me that Tracy is actually my half-sister. What? So Tracy's dad was my dad too? Turns out, when my mum had fallen pregnant with me, Tracy's dad's family hadn't approved because my mum was just a normal person. So they'd paid her to move to another city and stay away from dad. But what's even worse is that my dad didn't even try and look for us after that. In fact, a few months later, he'd already married Tracy's mom, who came from a rich family. Both Tracy and I stood there completely shocked. No wonder we looked so similar. So, you're my sister? I gasped, staring at Tracy with wide eyes. Really? Dad did that? What a selfish, arrogant man! I'm ashamed to even be related to him. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. The truth needs to be told. No, Tracy, wait. Don't do that. My mom yelled. Sorry, but I have to. I can't play this game anymore. I have a plan. At that, Tracy walked off and Arnold ran after her. Here we go, I thought. And eventually, the wedding day of Thomas and Tracy rolled around. Me, my mom, and Arnold showed up in disguise. When the vicar asked them both to say I do, Thomas said it immediately. But Tracy paused. The whole church held their breath waiting for her I do, but it never came. Instead, she said, I can't do this, Thomas. I'm sorry. That's when Arnold appeared, and Tracy ran towards him and held his hand. This man, he is the true love of my life. Of course, Tracy's dad was furious. He got up from his seat and yelled in front of everyone, What on earth is going on? And that's the moment when I felt so proud of Tracy. She said, I don't love Thomas, Dad, and he deserves to be with someone who truly loves him back. That's what marriage is about, right? It should be based on love, not status or money. And anyway... I don't want to hurt someone the way you did. What are you talking about? Who did I hurt? He looked stunned. 
Um, my mom, Kathy's mom, and Kathy herself, too. Tracy pointed over at me and my mom. Everyone in the church gasped as they looked from Tracy to me and back again. We really were identical. He looked like he was going to faint when he saw my mom. And then with a shaking hand, he pointed to me and said, And who is this? My mom walked towards him and said, This is Kathy, your daughter, the one you abandoned. Wow, I didn't think my mom had it in her. Honestly, the tension in the air was crazy. People started whispering and shuffling in their seats. That was when Thomas said, So, which one of you is Tracy? I decided this was my moment to speak up. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. I've been taking her place during the past month. I'm so sorry for lying to you this whole time. I couldn't even look him in the eyes, as I put in his hand the soda ring that meant so much to me. Thomas looked disappointed and marched off. I ran after, trying to stop him, but he didn't care. Only, when I tripped and fell to the ground, he turned around to say, Why would you do this? Giving me false hope? And for what? Honestly, it would have been better if you'd treated me the way Tracy the Ice Queen does. I'm sorry, Thomas. I didn't want to hurt you. My feelings for you are real. I started to cry. You're so selfish, Tracy. Oh no. Wait, I mean, Kathy. Then he walked off. In the end, the wedding was obviously cancelled. Tracy's dad, or should I say, our dad, had no choice but to accept Tracy and Arnold's relationship. I was so happy for her. Dad, of course, also apologized to me and Mum, and even offered me to come and live with them. But I refused. I wasn't about to leave my mom. However, I did accept his offer to pay for my vocal training. At least, I could live this dream of mine. Because I doubted I could make my other dream come true. My dream to see Thomas again. I was heartbroken. Still, I had to get on with life. Maybe I'd meet someone else. Pretty soon, it was time to graduate from my first semester of vocal training. And I was going to have my first ever solo performance to an audience. I was so nervous but I sang with all my heart. And afterwards, as I left the theater, someone ran up to me with a giant bouquet of flowers. Unbelievable. It was Thomas. I burst into tears and he said, Hi, Kathy. I'm Thomas. Nice to meet you. That put the widest smile on my face. I then ran into his arms saying, It feels so good to hear you call me by my real name. Yes, I'm Kathy. I know we just met, but will you be my boyfriend? And you guessed it. The rest is now history. We are currently planning our wedding. For real this time. And I've honestly never been happier. I can't believe it's been a year since Gerald passed away. I know it's been hard, but on the bright side, at least you still have your two wonderful daughters. Thank you. She smiled, then she rubbed Jamie's head. I'm very proud of this one. Yeah, yeah, Jamie's pretty, Jamie's girly, Jamie's adorable. And I was just the other child. I watched on as the three of them relaxed on the porch, giggling about dumb stuff and enjoying their lemonade, while I struggled with the stupid lawnmower. They didn't even notice me. I quickly finished up. Then I grabbed my skateboard and hurried out of there. Charlotte, stop right there. And where exactly do you think you're going without my permission? Skateboarding. I grumbled, then left. Whatever. She didn't care anyway. She just wanted to suffocate me. It wasn't like this back when I had Dad on my side. As you can see, I'm not a girly girl. All that manicure and makeup stuff just seems like nonsense to me. But my non-identical twin, Jamie, lives for it. She always wakes up extra early just so she has more time to style her hair, apply her makeup, and pick out her daily outfit. Then all she does at school is sit around with the other Barbies and giggle at pretty much everything. But 
guess that's the kind of girl mom prefers, as it's blatantly clear that Jamie's her favorite. It's always me who had to do all the chores in the house, just so her Jamie could sit there scrolling through her phone. There was one time when I was washing the dishes, I heard a deafening shriek. No, my sister wasn't being murdered. Instead, there was a spider crawling across the floor. Poof! It was just a spider! Nuts! I didn't want to be a chore slave. I just wanted to skateboard. Yeah, skateboarding and painting are my true passions. But Mum told me skateboarding was for boys. Ugh, how ridiculous! So I often snuck out. There were times I got so into it that I lost track of time and arrived home to Mum's furious eyes. You're grounded. Next time, I won't hesitate in breaking your boards in half. Jeez, that was so unfair. I pushed past her and ran into my room. Then clutching my board, I burst into tears. I wish Dad was still here. <sighs> Whenever Mum and I argued, he always came up to my room and told me how Mum only acted the way she did because she cares about me. She just has a different way of showing it. It's been a whole year since he passed, all because of a freak accident at the factory he worked in. Now, we all had to rely on Mum's home tailor job, and I just became the errand girl, while Jamie sits around looking pretty? Worse still, Mum insisted I get a part-time job to support the family, while Jamie didn't have to. When I questioned Mum on this, she just said, Jamie isn't like you. She wouldn't be able to handle both school and work. Excuse me, what? But I knew arguing with Mum about it was pointless. Anyways, it all worked out okay as I landed myself a job in this cool skateboard store. Oh, and also, less house chores. One rainy afternoon, the store was quiet, so I took out my sketchbook and designed some skateboards. Then my manager, Rick, peered over my shoulder. Uh-oh, was I in trouble? But to my surprise, he said, That's pretty good. Then he passed me a flyer for a skateboard designing contest. You should give it a try. This contest was meant to be, so I spent all my free time shut away in my room working on my design. I didn't see Mum or Jamie for a full week. How peaceful. <laughs> and guess what? I won first prize. It was awesome. However, Mum snatched the prize money from me due to family financial reasons. So my money was going to be used on new clothes and makeup for Jamie. Unbelievable. I didn't want to be under this roof anymore. But at 15, where else could I go? Poof. Then Mum told me her work was slow at the moment, so I should enter more contests to support my family. Hey, it got me out of chores, so I agreed to it. And I pretty much won all of them. But it did annoy me that I didn't get to keep my rewards. Then when I saw Jamie showing off her new shoes, I just wanted to yank them off her feet and throw them at her. Ugh! I thought twins were meant to have some sort of deep connection or something. Not me and Jamie. We couldn't be more different. Finally, I had a day off, so I arranged to go skateboarding with Rick. I grabbed my board and was about to leave when Mom blocked the door. Charlotte, where do you think you're going? Jamie has a date tomorrow, and her dress needs hand washing. What? This was ridiculous. I rolled my eyes and said, in that case, she can wash it herself. Don't take that attitude with me, young lady. You'll do as you're told. Through angry sobs, I screamed at her. I wish you weren't my mom. Then I ran upstairs to my room. Right at that moment, the doorbell rang. My mom calmed down, cleared her throat, and opened the door. Huh? Why was there an expensive-looking car in our driveway? And why was a wealthy-looking couple standing on the doorstep? Curious, I hid behind the wall to see who they were and what they were here for. From my eavesdropping, I found out that the couple was the Barnes. they just retired from their jobs working for the government in the secret intelligence department. Mom and Mrs. Barnes were besties in high school, so when they both fell pregnant at the same time, Mom offered to bring their daughter up as her own so they could go and work away on their secret mission. 
We've both taken early retirement, and we can finally enjoy life. We're very grateful to both you and Gerald for looking after our daughter, but we're here to take her home now. Oh. My. God. Turns out, one of us was adopted. No wonder we were nothing alike. But was it Jamie or me? Could it be me? I mean, Mom always preferred Jamie, so she could be her biological daughter. I knew they were my real parents. I could feel it. So taking a deep breath, I nervously stepped out to meet them. Jamie, come down here, sweetie. Mom called, and I froze on the spot. I watched on as Jamie appeared, and Mom introduced her to her real parents. She didn't even seem surprised. She just replied, yes, I know then sweetly grinned. I'm so happy that I can finally meet you both. The Barnes cooed over Jamie like she was a puppy or something. Then they got emotional and all. Ugh, it made me want to puke. I ran up to my room, locked the door, and cried. Life was so unfair. Jamie was always the lucky one, while I always got the raw deal out of things. I must have cried myself to sleep, as when I woke up, it was morning. I reached for my phone. Jamie had messaged me. It's sad you missed my farewell dinner. I had a great time living with you. Come and hang out sometime, okay? Poof! I aggressively threw my phone down onto my bed. Bold of her to assume I would ever want to hang out with her. We had nothing in common. Luck alone was an example. Life went on, but without Jamie, as she moved to some rich kid's school. And I continued going to school, work sneaking out to skateboard, and avoiding mom as much as possible. Then one chemistry class, while we were carrying out an experiment in the lab, one of my classmates made a mistake. And boom! We were all left looking like Cinderella! <laughs> and that might have actually been the best thing of that day, since we were dismissed two hours early. Excited, I rushed home to get my skateboard, but I knew I needed to sneak past mom so she didn't accuse me of skipping class. But as I passed the kitchen, I saw her sitting at the table sobbing to herself. What was going on? Suddenly, she stood up and walked out to the backyard. There was a leather notebook and a pen on the kitchen table, so I tiptoed over and took a peek. It looked like her diary. Hmm. Those freshly written lines were stained with tears. Jamie, my baby, I miss you terribly. I want you to live a wealthy, happy life, so I made the ultimate sacrifice. I tell myself every day that you're now a Barnes, not a Smith anymore. Not my daughter anymore. What? I couldn't trust my own eyes. What did these words mean? Could it be... But even if she mistreats me sometimes, she couldn't be that kind of person, right? I tore out that page, then hurried off to the skate park. Only, I couldn't concentrate. It was so bad, I messed up my pop shivet and landed on my butt. Ugh, this was driving me insane. That evening, Mom appeared in my doorway and asked, Charlotte, what did you do this afternoon? I answered, I told you already. I was at school and then the skate park. Did you see my notebook? The leather one? I shook my head in response. Oh, it's my expense book. I can't remember where I left it. She gave another scan around my room before leaving. When she was out of sight, I immediately pulled out my phone and texted Jamie. Jamie, I miss you a lot. Can I come over to your house tomorrow? I needed to see Mr. and Mrs. Barnes. I had to find out what was going on once and for all. Jamie replied she had a date the next day. Hmm. While I was typing out a reply, she sent me another message. We can't hang out. Please stop contacting me. Okay, that was weird. Did she sense something was up? I checked Jamie's social network profile and noted down the name of her new school. The next morning, I skipped class, went straight to Jamie's school administrator's office to ask for the Barnes's address. Oh, and of course, I made up a convincing story. Jamie's my sister, but then we found out she's actually the Barnes's biological daughter. Now my mom, who raised Jamie all these years, is really sick, and I need to tell her. But 
I don't know how to reach her. Perfect. She handed me the address and even wished me luck. There was no point wasting time, so I skated my way round to the Barneses. As I rang on their doorbell, I could feel my heart somersaulting in my chest. I introduced myself as soon as they answered the door. Hey, I'm Charlotte. Mrs. Smith's daughter? But I strongly believe I'm not Charlotte Smith, because I have something to show you. Then I handed them the torn page from my mom's diary. They both turned ghostly pale, and Mr. Barnes even had to grip onto the doorframe to steady himself. I felt bad for putting them through this. I mean, what if I was wrong? So I suggested, let's just do a DNA test to be sure. A few days later, the Barnes turned up at our house with Jamie. They slammed two DNA test results down in front of Mom. I peered down at them. Whoa! Turns out, I really am the Barnes's biological daughter after all! Mom gave this expressionless look, but then in a quiet voice she said, I just wanted Jamie to have a wealthy and privileged life. She's not as strong as Charlotte. She needs this more. Please don't blame her. She didn't know anything about this. Then she hugged Jamie and cried. Mr. and Mrs. Barnes looked overwhelmed. Finally, Mr. Barnes managed to find the words to say, Jamie's also like a daughter to us now. We will take care of her like you did with our daughter, but just stay away from us. He pulled Jamie away from Mum and guided her out of the house. Mrs. Barnes hugged me as she started crying. I found myself doing the same. This was my real mom holding me. Whoa, this was so crazy. I packed my things, but as I was leaving, my old mom called me back. Charlotte, I have something to give to you. Then she handed me a small box full of cash. This is your prize money. I put it away for your college fund. You better have it back. I'm so sorry. My sight blurred with tears. Dad was right. She still cared for me. My parents will forgive you. Then you'll soon see both of us again, I said as I hugged her tightly. Then I turned and left. A new life was waiting ahead of me. Finally, after an 11-hour flight, I arrived at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome! I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, but then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years. I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. Ah, <sighs> bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm... I could totally get used to U.S. guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right? He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh 
My God, this is the chicest villa ever. The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees. It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zack zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the U.S.? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew. So I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa, right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism, a trendy lifestyle in LA nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then mom couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh, how sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in LA. Sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until... That morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Jeez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So... Where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah, this place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, Mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short, remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. 
I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down, but when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. Hmm, is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then... Why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace the one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she'd got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but my head was filled with questions. Who really was mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car. And we followed mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for mom to return, and oh boy, it was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mom walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mom, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor, and you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out, after divorcing my dad... She was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed, she lied to me and Dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it, so we were kicked out. As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zack's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zack figured my mom was rich, 
so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zack. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great, so you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room, locked the door, and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Elena, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly, and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today. With Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mum from that swindler. Hey, rich girl. Good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, Mum is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So, okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> family. They're complicated. Right. I used to think my family was happy as can be. Nope. Just like when a water balloon gets too big and then explodes, mom and dad split up just after one big, fat, dumb fight. After that, my dad moved out. Me and my little sis Katie were given a hard choice. One of us would stay here with mom and the other would go live with dad and his new girlfriend, Zara. Katie's really sweet kind and sensitive, so I didn't think uprooting her life and making her live with some new stepmommy would be a good idea. I'm a big bro. Protecting my little sis is what I do best. So when it was settled, Katie stayed with mom and I moved in with dad and Zara. Fast forward a few months and mom fell in love with some dude named Glenn and married him. I wasn't sure about Glenn. I'd only met him a couple of times, but he seemed too smug for my liking. Anyway, back to dad's, it turns out my life with them was a breeze. They let me go out when I wanted, barely made me do any house chores. Instead, Zara was not a mean person. She treated me like family. And for my 16th birthday, she even suggested my dad to surprise me with my very own car. Ha, <laughs> happy days. But there was one snag. From my sis's messages, I sensed things weren't quite so rosy with her. So I went around to show her my new car. Well, really this was just an excuse to go and check things out. I strolled into the house to find Katie emptying the dishwasher. She was crying. I mean, I know house chores suck, but they weren't bad enough to bring someone to tears. Something was up. I made her a drink, and we both sat down and talked. She told me that it was Glenn. He didn't like her, and kept getting her into trouble. Katie said, He always considered me as a thorn in his eyes, because he wanted Mom to spend full time with him. He demanded that I do all the house chores, and then, when Mom got home from work, He'd say he did them. If I tried to question him on this, he'd get me into trouble by telling lies to mom about me. Such as one time he said I cursed at him and stole $20 from his wallet. I didn't like the sound of this, so I asked her, Have you tried telling mom what's going on? She nodded her head and blubbed out, Yes, she says I'm just lazy and jealous. I replied, Sounds like mom's blinded by love. Don't worry, sis, she'll come around and see sense soon. She sniffed back tears and said, I hope so, Rory, as things really suck here. I told her to let me know the next time Glenn did anything sneaky. Whoa, turns out this guy likes to play dirty. A few days later, he switched the cooking oil for whiskey, so when Mom started the cooking, the whole thing went up in flames. Then Glenn rushed to the rescue and blamed Katie, saying he'd seen her holding the whiskey bottle last night, but presumed she was just trying to sneak some. Then he told Mom that Katie had insisted he cook her steak. So the prank must have been meant for him. Mom instantly believed him over Katie, 
and punished her by making her miss her school dance and having to do house chores instead. Poor Katie, she was so upset. But then a week later, Sneaky Glenn struck again. This time Katie saw him switching Mom's diet mayo for the full fat stuff. Katie rushed to get Mom to catch him red-handed, but when she arrived, she saw him spreading diet mayo in her bagel. Mom shouted at Katie for saying untrue things about her stepdad and grounded her again. This sucked. My sis was the sweetest girl, and she doesn't deserve this. Not to mention the fact that some of these pranks sound dangerous. Well, not so much the mayo one, but the fire one could have ended so badly. This Glenn dude needed to stop with the games, and it was about time I showed him that no one messes with my little sis. So I suggested we switch things up for a couple weeks. Katie would go and live with Dad and get to know Zara, and I'd go and live with Mom and get to know Glenn. It's clear Glenn knew he couldn't mess with me, so for the first week he stayed out of my way. I used this time to refuel, relax, enjoy Mom's cooking, oh, and plot my revenge. When the second week arrived, I was ready to make Glenn's life a misery. Tough lucky, Glenny boy. Mom was working extra hard as Glenn had lost his job. So, being the good son I am, I drove her to the grocery store. Mom was so happy with my help, and she promised to make my favorite omelet. When we got home, Mom called Glenn to come and help carry the bags inside. He tried to impress her by carrying them all at once, but one of them split open and groceries went everywhere, including the box of eggs. Oops! Mom was furious and shouted at him. That's what you get for trying to show off and be a strong man. Now I can't have an omelet for my dinner, and I was looking forward to that. Haha, <laughs> seeing his dumbfounded expression was so funny. Yep, I cut a hole into the bottom of the bag, so that would happen. I wasn't finished with him yet, no chance. So in the next few days, when Mom left super early for work, I poured cornflakes everywhere, threw dirty laundry onto the floor, put the dog bowl on top of the couch, and stomped around in my dirty sneakers. I even took the breakfast Mom had prepared for Glenn to school with me, so I knew he'd wake up hungry, then spent all day having to tidy up my mess. Ha! Naturally, Glenn wasn't happy with me, so when I got back from school, he forced me to mow the lawn. This guy looked so tired spending the entire day clearing out my stuff, so fine by me. As when Mom came home and saw me, I gasped for breath and said, I had a busy day with schoolwork, but Glenn still made me do all the chores. I'm so tired, Mom. Mom rushed inside and found Glenn watching cartoons. Then she yelled at him. You're home all day, so why don't you mow the lawn instead of making my son do it? I had to go to work. My boy had to do the chores. So what exactly is your role in this house? Glenn was speechless. It didn't end there. As Mom was so mad, she made him sleep on the couch. Glenn avoided me after this, but that wasn't enough. I had to make sure that he'd leave my sis alone. I needed to make Glenn realize that his jerky ways were wrong. I knew Mom and Glenn had a piggy bank in their room for their future kid fund. So when they weren't around, I snuck into their room, smashed open the piggy bank, and hid the money in Glenn's jacket. That night after dinner, I asked Mom if I could borrow her headphones. So she went into her room to grab them. Just then, Glenn grabbed his jacket and was about to go somewhere. The moment he stepped out the door, we heard a frantic scream upstairs. It was my mom. She must have found the broken piggy bank and ran downstairs yelling at Glenn. He stood in the doorway confused, but then she checked his pockets and voila, there was the money. She angrily waved it in front of his face. What's this, huh? You're going to go out spending the savings for our kid, right? You're making no money, so stop ruining everything. They took their argument outside and I went up to my room and watched through the window. Suddenly a car pulled up and out stepped this well-dressed girl. Oh wow, it was Katie. She ran over to mom and hugged her. Then, Dad and Zara appeared. Turns out Katie had had a great time at Dad's. Zara had always wanted a daughter, so when Katie came, she was so happy and had taken her shopping, got her hair done, and spoiled her. When Mom looked at her own daughter having a better life with her stepmom, I was pretty sure she realized how bad she was. I could see her ashamed face. I rushed downstairs and greeted my sis. Then I turned to Mom and said, Mom, you should care for Katie more. You see, Glenn even treated me badly. You don't know how hard he was with her. We love you, so please trust Katie like you trust me. Then I turned to Glenn. You're her husband, but it doesn't mean you can replace us in our mom's heart. Mommies always love their children best. Don't be childish and try to separate them or I'll come back. I winked at him. Yeah, okay, he grunted. Then he turned to Katie and said, I'm sorry, Katie. What do you say to us starting again? Katie smiled sweetly and said, okay, I'd like that. It looks like I'd save the day. 
Now Glenn knew that if he ever messed with Katie again, then I'd be back. After that, Mom still made Glenn do all the chores, but Katie, being the sweet girl that she is, helped him out with them. As for me, I went back to life at Dad's. I went around there more often to check on Katie and give Mom a lift to the grocery store. And Katie even came around for barbecues and to have a girly pamper session with Zara. So in the end, everything worked out, and now we're one big, crazy, dysfunctional family. But hey, as long as everyone's happy and doesn't try to mess with my little sis, then it's all good with me. Hi guys, I'm Chrissy, and my high school life took a drastic turn thanks to my crazy, overprotective mom. You see, my parents divorced when I was a little kid. I stayed with my mom, but she worked for the criminal investigation department, which meant she was super busy, so the house chores remained undone, and we lived off takeaways. Trust me, having pizza and egg fried rice every night isn't as good as it sounds. My grandparents could see that my mom was struggling to juggle her work and home life commitments, so I went to stay with them. I didn't mind this, as mom always visited me on weekends. Besides, grandma's meals are delicious. But then, mom switched departments. She went from chasing criminals to handling paperwork at the station. Due to these changes in circumstances, she had far more time on her hands, so I moved back in with her. It's only by living with her that I realized just how different she is to me. Talk about my opposite, as she's strong, fierce, and impulsive. Basically, she's like a man, while I'm a sweet girly girl who loves wearing pretty clothes and watching cute movies. You can imagine my horror when I invited my bestie, Sharon, over, and mom was walking around the house in a skull print tank top, ripped jeans, and biker boots. She looked like she was going on a bike rally. Yeah, this was just her usual style, but I was expecting she would at least act normal for once when we had a guest around. It was so cringe. She was almost 40, not 15. Then, on my first day of high school, mom insisted she take me there and pick me up, as she was worried there might be troublemakers on the bus. Yep, I know, this was ridiculous. I mean, how delicate does she think I am? But I didn't want to upset her, so I reluctantly agreed. School's out and I was chatting with my friends while waiting for my mom to show up when we suddenly heard the sound of a motorbike engine coming toward the school. Me and my friends got excited and whistled as we thought a cute guy was passing by. But then they stopped near us and took off their helmet. I literally wanted to faint. It was my beloved mother. Oh, sweet Jesus. What on earth was she doing? My mom shouted with joy. Hey, Chrissy, get on. Then she held a spare helmet out to me. I swear it was like the whole school was outside watching us. How embarrassing. When we arrived home, I asked her where the bike had come from. She replied, What? Oh, you mean Eleanor? I just bought her last week. The weather is so nice today, so I thought I would bring her along. Yes, you heard her right. My mom named the bike after Eleanor Roosevelt. Unbelievable! The embarrassment didn't end there. Oh no. One day, my teacher informed us that tomorrow after school was a parent-teacher conference. I couldn't have mom turning up in a teenage rebel outfit, so I searched her closet for something mom-like. Nope. All my mom owned were t-shirts, ripped shorts, and crop tops. Ugh! So I went online and found this beautiful blue dress, then I told her to buy it. The next day after school, I waited for mom in my form room. All the parents were already there. Only my mom was missing. I was about to call her when suddenly somebody walked into the room. Oh. My. God. Someone, please knock me out right now. It was my mom. And you wouldn't believe what she was wearing. No, it wasn't the blue dress. Instead, it was this super skinny black leather dress black sunglasses, 10-inch high heels, and a black choker necklace. She looked like she belonged in a vampire movie. Everyone was gawping at her. I think some of the dads were even drooling a bit. When I confronted her about it, she just shrugged and said, Sweetie, this dress is much more my style than that mumsy blue one. Now this was officially my number one most embarrassing moment ever. Thanks, Mom. Why couldn't she be like me? I mean, I was starting to think that I was the adult here, not her. The embarrassment didn't end there. 
Instead, she took it to a whole new level. My school was planning a camping trip, and I was so excited about it. Mom wanted to come along and supervise, but I firmly said no. She started saying, but honey, you don't know how dangerous the woods are. What if you got bitten by a snake? Do you know how to handle that? I don't think so. What? She was just being ridiculous again. We argued for a while, but in the end, she agreed to let me go without her. The trip was so much fun, and some cute boys asked Sharon and me if we wanted to go for a swim in the lake. Of course, we said yes. I mean, look at them. They were so cute. Suddenly, I heard screaming. It was Sharon. She said someone was hiding in the bushes and watching us. That was so creepy. The cute boys said they'd go and check it out, but then this person jumped out of the bush and did a judo throw on them. Wait a minute. I know that move. Could it be? Oh no. It was my mom. What was she wearing? She was in full army gear. She even had binoculars. Jeez, mom. What were you doing looking like a G.I. Joe? I couldn't hold my tears and I cried out, Oh my god, why can't you leave me alone? You're ruining everything! Then I ran back to the camp. She left after that, but I felt so embarrassed for the rest of the trip. When I returned home, my mom immediately said sorry to me and swore that something like that would never happen again. Okay, I could see in her eyes that she really meant it, so I would give her another chance. She calmed down a lot after that, and even let me go to school by myself. Well, that was big progress, don't you think? Soon after that, I started to date this boy named Kevin. And boy, was he hot! He was one of the popular kids at school, so I still couldn't believe he chose me. I don't know how Mom found out about him, but she did, and she insisted on inviting him over for dinner. I made her agree not to do anything crazy. I mean... What was the worst that could happen? The dinner was going well, until we got to dessert. Then mom started asking him awkward questions, like, Kevin, how many girls have you dated? And, I assume you two have health classes at school? Or should I remind you of some important facts? Oh, sweet Jesus, mom! Her questions were beyond embarrassing. Kevin just sat there with a super awkward smile on his face and didn't answer. But then mom announced it was very late and practically shoved him out of the house. Huh, it was only 8.30 p.m. After he left, I went straight to my mom and we started arguing. Mom, you agreed not to do anything crazy. Why can't you act like a normal mom? She replied, Oh, honey, that Kevin guy is really cute, but he's not good for you. I know his type. They only want to take advantage of girly girls like you. What? Girly girls like me? What was that supposed to mean? I shouted back. You're doing it again! You're being overprotective! That's because you're not tough enough! If you wouldn't be so girly and be a badass like your mom, I wouldn't have to protect you all the time. I stormed up to my room and slammed the door shut. I was so going to prove to her that she was wrong about Kevin and that I didn't need her protection. Fortunately, mom hadn't scared Kevin off. Phew! He told me that his parents were super embarrassing, too. One evening, Kevin took me to this nice restaurant. There were candles, live music, and the food was delicious. It was so romantic. Then he touched my hand and leaned in closer. This was so exciting. I was about to have my first kiss. Suddenly, someone banged on the table nearby and ruined the moment. That's when I noticed they had a keychain on their bag that looked exactly like the one I'd made once at summer camp. I stood up and walked toward the table. A middle-aged lady with blonde hair and sunglasses was sitting there. I tried to look at her face, but it was like she was avoiding me. I took a closer look, and I couldn't believe it. I ripped the wig off her head, and yes, it was my beloved mother, again! To be honest, I didn't want to argue with her anymore. Today was proof that she just couldn't change. So I just said in a calm voice, I hate you, mom. You're the worst mom ever. Then I grabbed Kevin's arm and ran out of there. Okay, maybe what I said was a bit harsh, but she just ruined what would have been my first kiss. I couldn't concentrate on our date after that, so I asked Kevin to take me home. 
but to my surprise, he drove me back to his place. Uh-oh, I knew what that meant. But I wasn't ready for any of that yet, so I told him I'd get an Uber. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm and tried to drag me into his house. I couldn't believe this was actually happening. Mom was so right about him. I was freaking out. But then suddenly, I remembered something important that she'd taught me, so I used her signature judo move on him. It worked, as he laid on the ground and groaned out in pain. Ha! Huh. And that's when my mom arrived on her motorbike. As soon as I saw her, I ran over to her, hugged her tight, and cried like a baby in her arms. You must be wondering how my mom found me. Well, when Kevin came by to have dinner, she pickpocketed his phone and hacked it so she had access to all his messages and location. So after I dragged him out of the restaurant, he texted his friends saying he was trying to get in bed with me at all costs, which my mom saw, so she rushed to rescue me. Oh God, mom, that was so not okay. But what could you expect from a criminal investigator? When we arrived home, we had a serious talk. To my surprise, she admitted that she was wrong about me. She saw now that I was able to take care of myself. That judo move I did on Kevin really impressed her. See? Girly girls can kick some butt too! So, from that moment on, things between us improved lots. Turns out, my mom isn't so annoying after all. I realize now that she's pretty cool, and all the things she did were just to protect me. Okay, so maybe she took it to the extreme levels, but she did it with good intentions. Thanks to my mom, I feel stronger now. You know what they say, I'm a strong woman because a strong woman raised me. Although, one thing's for sure, I won't be borrowing her clothes anytime soon. Hi everyone, I'm Emma and this is my story about what can happen when someone gets so jealous of you, they try to ruin your life. It all started with my mom. She's a beautiful woman and I took after her. So when she divorced my dad and we moved to a new town, obviously I started a new school. That's when the trouble began. I became popular very quickly, but not with the girls. It was the boys who went wild for me and it drove me crazy. I just wanted a normal life with some nice friends and it wasn't my fault my mom had passed her beauty down to me. Anyway, there was one girl in particular called Anna who was having none of it. She was also pretty, but she was seriously jealous of me from day one. I remember that first week hearing some girls whispering in the bathroom that I was prettier than Anna. And then Anna walked in and she looked like she wanted to scream. After that, she went out of her way to destroy my life. At my old school, I'd been a cheerleader, so I signed up to join at this new school. Little did I know, Anna was head cheerleader. She pretended to be all nice to me at practice. Then at the first football game we were performing and going through our routine which Anna had choreographed, she made me go at the top of the pyramid, balancing on top of everyone. I was so nervous, but I knew I could do it. Anyway, as I was climbing up there, I suddenly saw Anna whisper to the girl next to her and then she moved and the whole pyramid started to fall. She obviously wanted to hurt Hurt me, but it backfired and we all fell on top of her. All we heard was a scream as her arm snapped. Afterwards, she told everyone I was clumsy and it was all my fault, but I knew she'd planned it so I'd be the one to get hurt. And that's not all. Prom was coming up and my mom had made me the most beautiful long silk dress. I felt like a princess and couldn't wait to see what everyone would think. Of course, Anna was also wearing a beautiful dress. But everyone was staring at me. I saw her roll her eyes. And then when I was dancing with two of my friends, I felt something rip. I looked behind me and Anna was standing on my dress. I couldn't believe it. I tried to move, but she wouldn't budge and it wouldn't stop ripping. Suddenly, I was standing there with a mini dress and I wanted to cry. But then my friend quickly got some scissors and kneaded it up. And believe it or not, it actually looked even cooler than before. <laughs> 
Once again, Anna tried to make me look like a fool, but it all fell on her. Everyone was so impressed with my dress, and I even started a new trend wearing mini dresses to prom. However, despite all these silly pranks, there was one thing that Anna had that I didn't. A boyfriend. She was dating Isaac, one of the top athletes in school, and anytime she was with him and saw me, she would always smirk and look me up and down as if to say she had a boyfriend and I didn't. I didn't care for her silly competitiveness though. I wasn't even bothered about being single, all I wanted was for her to leave me alone. Pretty soon, we became like enemies. I just couldn't stand her and her annoying behaviors, but then things got worse. One weekend, my mom drove me to a game and insisted on staying to watch my cheerleading performance. Later, I spotted her chatting with some men and she looked like she was having a good time. I was happy to see her smile that brightly after a long time. And as expected, not long after that, she introduced him to me, but you won't believe who it was. It turned out he was Anna's dad, out of all people on earth. And worse still, they were now hopelessly in love and even wanted to get married. Oh no! If I knew who he was, I would have broken them up from the start. I couldn't be Anna's stepsister. This was my worst nightmare. And when Anna found out about this, she started to treat me even worse. One time, I was walking in the canteen when suddenly someone pushed me. I went flying and ended up bumping into a boy who fell over too. It was so sore, but the pain quickly disappeared when I realized who the boy was. It was Liam, the new Hawkeye who just joined the athletes club. I kept apologizing to him, but he just laughed and said it was okay, then helped me get up and took me to the nurse's office to make sure I wasn't hurt. Afterwards, he even asked for my number. I couldn't believe it. I was actually blushing over a boy. Then, I went back to the canteen, and there was Anna, staring at me all angry. I didn't even have to think twice about who'd push me. Obviously, Anna. Well, thanks to her silly prank, now I had a cute guy interested in me. And for once, I was actually interested in him too. It didn't take long before we became a couple, and then we were pretty much attached at the hip. I also joined his athlete's practice, and because Isaac was there too, Anna was always there as well. She just glared at me with dagger eyes whenever she saw me. I didn't get what her problem was. Anyway, one time, the athletes club suggested we all go see a movie, with girlfriends included. In the theater, Anna sat behind me and kept kicking my chair. I turned over and asked her to stop, but she wouldn't. I could feel the anger welling up inside me and I thought I was going to explode, but I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Liam. So, I decided I needed to stay as far away from Anna as possible. That wasn't easy though. Our school had organized a big athletes competition with another school and so Liam was always practicing. I always sat in the stands and watched him and on the day of the competition Anna came and sat next to me. I almost froze. What was she up to? Instead of pulling some prank, she handed me a bottle of water and said, Hey Emma, I don't want to be your enemy anymore. We're basically going to be sisters so let's just make up, okay? Then she turned to me and smiled shyly. Whoa, well, that was a surprise. I felt relieved though and said, I thought this day would never come. I hated things being all awkward between us. Anna just smiled at me again. And then we came down to the field where Isaac and Liam were warming up for the race to wish them luck. Finally, the competition began. Anna and I sat together, cheering our boyfriends on. As expected, Liam won first prize and Isaac came in second. I was so happy for Liam and ran out to the field to hug him. But suddenly, some of the organizers approached him and escorted him off the field. I had no idea what was going on, but I saw Anna smirking at me and then walking away. What was that for? After a while, the organizers came back and said Liam had been caught doping. So now the first prize would go to Isaac. What? There was no way Liam would do something illegal like that. He'd never used any kind of substance to perform well. He was just naturally talented. Everyone started saying mean things about Liam and I couldn't bear it. So I went to find him. I saw him sitting in the corner of the locker room looking shocked. When he saw me, he shook his head and said, I didn't use doping. You have to believe me, Emma. I'm not that kind of guy. All I did was drink the water you gave me. Oh my god, the water bottle! 
Anna had given it to me, and I must have passed it on to Liam to hide her before the competition. I thought she was being nice, but of course she wasn't. This was Anna we were talking about. She'd planned this. She was seriously too much. I ran to find her and I was raging. She was happily talking to the other athlete, so I grabbed her wrist and pulled her away. How could you? Are you trying to ruin Liam's life? I yelled at her. Anna wasn't even bothered. She just smirked and said, Yup, I am, and so what? I was shaking by that point and I said, You're crazy. Why did you do it? What has Liam ever done to you? I did it because I hate you. You stole everything from me, including Liam. Huh? I was so confused. Since when did Anna like Liam? Well, Isaac appeared at the exact moment and he obviously heard what she said. He started shouting, You told me you did that to help me win, but no, you're a complete liar. So you're just jealous of Emma, huh? Okay then, now you can run after Liam as you wish. We're over. Anna was shocked and tried to explain that she'd done it for him, that he was misunderstanding her, but he wouldn't even look at her. He said, You won't get away with this, Anna. I'm gonna tell the organizers right now. Anna tried to get him to stop, but he pushed her away, and she ended up falling onto the ground where she burst in tears. Ha! She deserved it. I went back to find Liam, and the organizers announced that there were some problems with the results, and that the competition would be repeated the following weekend. Liam looked so happy and hugged me. Everything worked out in the end. Well, at least for Liam and me. Liam still won first place, and now he's going to compete in the international competition. As for Anna and Isaac, well, they broke up, and Anna moved to another city with her mom and Isaac got kicked out of the athletes club. On another note, my mom and Anna's dad are getting married soon, and even though I can't stand Anna, I'm still going to go because it'll mean a lot to my mom. At least I don't need to live in the same house as Anna. She's got to be the most jealous person I've ever met, and it's not done her any good. Envy really is poison. It's much better to just be happy with what you have right now, right? Wow, it's been a busy day at the salon. What can I say? It's all thanks to my top-notch hair styling talent. Ta-da! What did you do to my hair? Platinum blonde is the current trend, ma'am. I, I asked for brown! How can I go to school looking like this? Ugh, she has no eye for beauty. <sighs> but, oh no, this dumb machine? <sighs> at least it's not completely burned. Were you dosing off while cutting my hair? Give us our money back, now! Money? I've only worked here for a week. How am I supposed to pay them back? Ask my parents? No way. I, the beautiful Olivia, had declared in front of them that I hated school and would build my own career through my passion for hairstyling, not with any of those boring books. So, I left my hometown and got a job at this fancy hair salon in the big city. I would prove to my parents that I could actually earn money with my talent. Ugh, but now my boss was going berserk at me. Oh, dearie me. There's no need to make a fuss over such a measly amount of money. I shall pay for it on her behalf. I turned around and, wow, it was this graceful-looking middle-aged woman. Her outfit, hairstyle, and manners all screamed elegance and luxury. Pretty girl, I can see that you have a keen eye for beauty. The only thing you're missing is an experienced mentor's guidance, and I happen to know someone. I can't believe it! Mr. Fullington, the world's number one hairstylist, was gonna be my mentor! Of course, it's all thanks to this awesome lady! Oh, wait, Mom. I should call her Mom now, as she's just adopted me! She must have taken a liking to me seeing how determined I was, pursuing my passion despite all hardship. She and her husband are millionaires, who couldn't have children, so, yeah they decided to take me in. Man, this is the best thing to happen to me ever! Olivia, school isn't the only way to success. With your talent, the road can be much shorter. My foster parents are so kind. Just look at this room. I feel like a princess. Just look at this gigantic bed, satin sheets, and walk-in closet. Better still, they even arranged for a makeup artist and a stylist to spend all day helping me look fabulous. The rich kid's life sure was sweet. I was so immersed in all of it that I almost forgot the main reason why I agreed to do this. The hairstyling course with Mr. Fullington. Mom, Dad, I know that you're both very busy, 
but I've been waiting so long. Has Mr. Fullington forgot about our appointment? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, but he's been sick, so his schedule has all been put off till next month. Don't worry, darling. In the meantime, why don't you try attending some fancy parties on our behalf? It's a good chance to expand your social circle and learn how to make money from all the best. Oh, that sounds pretty good. If I could make lots of money, then my parents would have to take me seriously and stop their stupid go-back-to-school demands. As soon as I arrived at the party, all these new friends gathered around and complimented on how beautiful I looked. The rich guys went crazy for me too. I instantly became the center of attention. This one guy called Bruce introduced himself as the son of the CEO to the top media corporation in the US. Olivia, that exquisite face of yours was made for the big screen. You should play the leading role in our new movie. Oh, acting? I'd never thought about it before. Hmm, walking down the red carpet and posing in front of hundreds of cameras did sound appealing. It's worth a try, right? I was still stunned at Bruce's offer when I felt something cool on my finger. Oh my gosh, a sparkly red diamond ring? William, heir to the GeoGems Limited. Pleasure to meet you, Olivia. Please consider this my greeting gift. And this continued all evening, until I couldn't hold any more stuff. Flowers from Justin, a jewelry set from Andrew, a perfume collection from Antony, and this watch from… geez, I couldn't remember anymore. I was trying to slip away when a handsome guy blocked me. You're stunning, Olivia. Can I see you tomorrow? A date? I didn't even know him. No, no. What a pity. I'm meeting my old friends at West High tomorrow. Sorry, it's not that I'm picky or anything, but dating can't be that easy, right? Phew, finally home. What an eventful evening. Just then, I got a call from Minnie, my best friend. Minnie told me that some mean girls at school were spreading rumors that I stole money from my parents, then packed up and ran away. Okay then, let them tittle-tattle. Tomorrow, I'll show those meanies who's the real deal. Yay, it's so nice to see Minnie again. We immediately chatted non-stop about all kinds of things. Then suddenly, the hyenas appeared with the same sarcastic tone as usual. Wow, counterfeit goods are so well made these days. You know, your supposedly Birkin bag is extremely rare. There's only five of those on Earth, right? Busted! How much do supercar hourly rentals and bodyguards cost nowadays, little miss show-off? Minnie was going to defend me, but I stopped her. No need to waste time arguing with these people. <laughs> I then grasped Minnie's hand to leave, but look, Olivia! I looked up. There was an airplane flying at very close range, and it was writing something? O L I V. The white smoke actually spelled out m my name! I've only seen this in movies! I gasped in shock as the plane landed, and stepping out of the cockpit was… the guy at the party last night, Nathan. Turns out, he was the youngest pilot in America, and wanted to impress me with this grand gesture after being rejected yesterday. Flying in the sky is my passion. And, Olivia, I want to be your personal pilot, taking you wherever you want. Oh my goodness, I don't know what was better. Having a rich, handsome guy going out of his way to impress me, or seeing the astonished looks on my fake friends' faces. <sighs> Such thrilling days like this should have made me happy, right? But sitting among this mountain of expensive gifts, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Being the center of smitten eyes and receiving countless compliments and gifts was cool and all, but Minnie's words awakened me. Olivia, do you think they really are generous enough to give you all this? without asking for anything in return? No, I shouldn't accept these pricey items. I was putting them all back in their boxes to return them when my foster mom walked in. Oh no, darling. Returning gifts is considered very insulting in our society. <sighs> the world of the rich is so complicated. So I listened to her and dismissed the idea of returning those presents. But I should still return the favor, right? So I agreed to meet some of them. The first person must be the one who impressed me the most, Nathan the pilot. His airplane hangar was where we had our first date. I couldn't find anything bad about Nathan, but we just didn't click. He kept on rambling about planes, which model each was, how hard it was for him to get them, blah, 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 while I had no interest in any of this. 
The next guy, William, was even worse. He not only invited me, but also dozens of other beautiful girls. He even gave each girl a gem stone from his collection. A true player, so obviously a skip. Bruce was easier to talk to, but I soon realized that he had a problem. This set of glassware was custom made by the most skillful craftsman in Switzerland. It's yours if you like. Oh, wait, I'll have someone bring them over later. Look at this beautiful painting. Wouldn't it be perfect in your bedroom? Ah, but it's too big for you to carry home. I'll send it over later. What about my leading role in the movie you mentioned? <laughs> I almost forgot. But Olivia, acting is not as easy as you think. Besides, the entertainment industry is really toxic. Please just be my princess, okay? See? He kept promising me the world and then... nothing. What a boastful, stingy liar. I didn't like any of these guys, so I must return their expensive gifts. But as soon as I carried the boxes out of the room, my foster mom stopped me. My silly Olivia, why are you so concerned about this? To them, these things are merely a drop in the ocean. But if you feel uncomfortable, I'll keep them out of sight for you. Giving them back will bring shame to our family. And you don't want that, do you? All right, that seemed like the best solution. My foster parents had been so nice to me, I shouldn't cause them any trouble. But a few days later, I discovered that they had secretly used my phone to ask Bruce for more presents. He thought I was angry, so he promised me a huge surprise tomorrow. It's weird. Why did they do that? They're as rich as Bruce's family, aren't they? I asked them why, and turned out my foster parents just wanted to test Bruce, as he seemed to be the most persistent in pursuing me, but had not shown his sincerity. Early next morning, I received a call from Bruce, saying that he'd sent someone over with a luxurious car, and reminded me about our date tonight. Wait, an entire car? That's too much this time! I was about to tell him to keep it when my foster father rushed in, saying that my parents were seriously ill. Oh gosh. I quickly hung up the phone and immediately went back to my hometown. Dear God, please protect my parents. Surprisingly, my mom opened the door looking perfectly fine, and there was dad as healthy as can be watching TV. Ah, <sighs> thank goodness. My foster dad must have made a mistake. It's been a while since I was home, so I decided to stay the night. And as we were having some family time, I got another call from Bruce. Oh no, I forgot to cancel our date. And now he's at the mansion waiting for me. The problem was, Bruce couldn't find his sports car anywhere and kept on making a fuss about it. I tried calling my foster parents to resolve this, but I couldn't contact them the whole evening. The morning after, I returned to the mansion to find strangers going in and out. Um, what are you all doing? Hi. We're moving in. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's such a catch to find a good place like this up for rent at reasonable prices. Right in the local newspaper, am I right? For rent? No, no, no. What on earth is going on? I rushed into my foster parents' bedroom, but it was empty. Even the gifts they said they'd keep for me were all gone. They left without a trace, as if they were running away. What? Did your partners in crime leave you? Now don't you dare deny it, you fraud! What did he say? Partners in crime? Fraud? I tried explaining to him how I wanted to return all the gifts I received, but he wouldn't believe me. He threatened to call the cops if he didn't get his car back. Oh no, no way that's gonna happen. All I could do was beg Bruce to give me some time. This is the home of our town's famous sheriff. He's the only person who could help me, but all I got was, I'm sorry, but I'm retired. You're gonna have to ask someone else. What to do now? I was freaking out when, out of nowhere, no need for my dad. This is a piece of cake. I can give you a hand. I turned around to see a guy leaning on the door with a cold, arrogant look, and his arms crossed. Who is this guy? Can he really help me? We'll see. Wow, Alan really took the risk and invested a lot in this. A sports car, a mansion, expensive trips, and even this huge event. I have to admit, he looks quite handsome being all dressed up. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Alan, yep, the sheriff's son, is playing the rich heir of a big corporation chasing after a beautiful young lady, which is me. However, I didn't expect things would turn out so real. Alan's pursuit of me even made it on the local news. You guys must be curious how someone who's not a millionaire did this. 
Well, Alan convinced Bruce to fund our plan. He was hesitant at first, but he soon realized that this was the only way to catch the frauds and get his stuff back, so reluctantly he agreed. Alan is indeed a genius, and his well-thought-out strategy quickly got the fish hooked. We were making headlines everywhere, and I finally received a text from my so-called foster mom. At first, she was just asking how I was doing, and talked about how busy they were with overseas projects, until today. Olivia, how's it going with that mysterious millionaire boyfriend of yours? He seems willing to give you anything. So you will consider him, won't you, darling? As expected, these money-hungry crooks wouldn't let it slide once they heard millionaire. So I replied to her that my rich man was treating me well and wanted to throw an extravagant feast this weekend to officially announce our relationship. And I hoped my parents could put off their business trip and come join us. Tonight was the night. Gosh, I was so nervous as my mom didn't reply to that message of mine. Will they show up or did they sense something was off? While I was super nervous, Alan came to me and held my hand real tight. Don't worry, Olivia. Everything will work out as planned. My, my. What is this feeling? It's undeniable that I always feel so safe being with Alan. The party finally began. Alan proposed to me with this rare, precious surrender by gem on a ring, which is one of the only three existing in the whole world. Everyone started buzzing. Alan's acting was so perfect, from his eye contact to the words he said, that I couldn't help but feel butterflies in my stomach. I... I do. When the party was over and all the guests left, I received a call from my foster mom telling me to go to the back gate. As predicted, they offered to keep the engagement ring for me. Drop the act, frauds! The two were still processing what was happening when the cops barged in and arrested them. It worked! Can't believe I've successfully tricked these notorious scammers! <laughs> what about my car? My Bugatti? Where is it? Oh, I almost forgot the main sponsor for this perfect plan. Without him, we definitely couldn't pull this off. Her stingy millionaire, Bruce Dillon. I bet there hasn't been a single day gone by that he didn't think about his missing gifts, huh? <laughs> that reminds me. This sparkling, precious ring, too. I quickly took it off, passed it to Alan, and told him to give it back to Bruce. But the minute the surrender bite ring left my finger, Alan put on something else. Oh my god, another ring? Your role as a millionaire's girlfriend may be over. But will you be a girlfriend to an ordinary guy like me, Olivia? Yes! A million times yes! After all this mess, I now realize that I've still got a lot of learning to do. So I've decided to listen to my parents and finish school. Turns out, if I really paid attention in class, it's actually pretty interesting. And Minnie is still my amazing BFF, who let me have free reign to experiment on her hair. And of course, this cute future detective too. Babe, time to change your hairstyle. Dad, where have you been? I, I was so worried. Go away, don't touch me. I froze on the spot, not understanding why my once kind-hearted father was being so cold toward me. I snapped out of my daze and tried helping him forward, but he flinched me away. My eyes started to tear up, I, and I didn't know what to do. Then another woman appeared. She quickly helped him up and smiled at me. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll take care of him. Excuse me? Who was she? My mother had barely been put in the ground, and Dad had already moved on? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I quickly left the room. How could things go downhill this quickly? My life used to be so simple and perfect. I had a loving family. I was always on top at school. People always complimented me on how I inherited both the beauty and intelligence of my mom and dad. But then a traffic accident happened and took mom away from us. Ever since then, my polite, well-mannered, loving dad changed into a cruel, bitter drunk who seemed to despise me. Ugh. The next day, I arrived home from school with the worry about what state my dad would be in. But, huh? Why was Uncle Alfred on my doorstep? I invited him inside, and there was Dad, slumped on the couch, surrounded by empty beer cans. As soon as he saw us, he slurred out and started throwing the cans at us. Uncle Alfred then took me to dinner so we could have a talk. 
and I couldn't help the tears as I blurted out how bad things were at home. He patted my arm and said, Your father's been through a lot. I think it's best if we give him time to sort himself out. I think you should come live with us for a while. So that's how I ended up living with Uncle Alfred, Aunt Madeline, and my cousin Charity. At first, everything seemed fine. As bad as it sounds, it was a relief to be away from Dad and to be able to properly process my thoughts for once. I was so grateful to Uncle Alfred for giving me a second home. But then he went away on a business trip, and everything changed. I was walking back to my room when Charity appeared in her doorway and tripped me up. As I stumbled and landed on my hands and knees, she snorted out, Yes, that's right. Bow down to your queen, you hideous peasant. You should know your place in this house. Ugh, that girl was such a pain. Since her dad went away, she wouldn't quit tormenting me. It's ironic that her name is Charity, but she doesn't seem kind at all. I'd had enough of her cruel jibes. This had just got personal. So I angrily replied, I know you're just jealous of me because your grades suck and you're not as pretty. Charity's eyes welled up. Then she shoved past me and ran to her mom. I followed after her and explained what happened to my Aunt Madeline. She frowned at Charity, then scolded her. Phew. Fortunately, I had Aunt Madeline on my side. Anyway, justice is served, right? Wrong. As it wasn't long before my aunt's attitude changed toward me too. One time, I was helping my aunt cook a casserole when the doorbell rang. It turned out to be an old friend of my aunt. As soon as she saw me, she happily said, Wow! It's only been a few years, but Charity sure has grown up. The older she gets, the more she looks like Alfred, doesn't she? Look at her eyes and smile. I stared at Aunt Madeline in confusion and saw her mood immediately shift. That night when I brought the casserole dish out, Aunt Madeline took one bite then spat it into a napkin. You're clumsy, thoughtless, and now an awful cook? Be a bit more useful, will you? I stared at her open-mouthed. Unable to find the words to say, then Charity piped in, Please, never make this again. Casserole is so gross. Just like you. Then she smirked at me as she dumped the entire plate into the trash. Weird. Didn't Aunt Madeline tell me to cook this because it was Charity's favorite? Ugh, it seemed like life in this house wasn't going to get any easier. Over the next week, their mocking and snide comments continued. One day I styled my hair in a different way, and Charity sniggered at me. What's that? It looks like you got a lobster on your head. <laughs> Have you ever considered dyeing your hair, by the way? Because blonde really doesn't suit you. On another occasion, I was invited to a party, so I put on this cute dress. But when I walked downstairs in it, they both stared at me. My aunt said, Oh, dear. Is that piece of rag making you look even chubbier than usual? Or is it because you've been so well-fed living with us? Another time, I was sitting at the breakfast table, dabbing lip gloss onto my lips, when Charity yanked it off me. As I tried to grab it back, she sniggered out, What for? Putting this on your gross lips just makes you look desperate. No one wants to kiss you anyway. Gosh, my patience with this girl was wearing very thin. Worse still, Aunt Madeline overheard the whole thing, but she just laughed. I didn't understand why they were being like this. I knew I wasn't ugly or fat, and far from it. I know I'm pretty, as I was always complimented on my glossy long hair. Well, until I moved here, anyway. This was so confusing. Why were they jealous of me? It turns out that being too beautiful was not easy. Ugh. Things got trickier when my dad, who's also the school principal, returned to work after his time off. He totally ignored me, and it made me feel terrible. <sighs> Then I arrived home from school to Aunt Madeline fussing over me and asking if I wanted anything to eat. Huh? What? Oh, I see. Uncle Alfred was back from his work trip. Ugh. It was time I exposed this mother-daughter duo's fake act once and for all. So that evening, I volunteered to cook. Yep, you guessed it. I made the casserole dish. As I brought it out, Charity accidentally shouted, Ew! I already told you I hate this dish. Aunt Madeline turned pale, and Charity gave this gawping, shocked look. Then I dropped to my knees and pleaded, I know I'm wrong. Please don't punish me anymore. I don't want to sleep in the basement again. Uncle Alfred looked very confused, so I continued. I forgot that Charity hates this dish. I've been punished several times, but I still keep on messing up. I'm, I'm the one to blame. What is this? I go away for a few weeks and come back to carnage? He ordered Aunt Madeline into their room for a private chat. We're not even related. 
don't expect my mother and I to be nice to you, she said, then stormed off. What? What did Charity mean? Of course we were related. Aunt Madeline was my dad's sister, right? I wanted to know what was going on, so I hid behind the door and listened in on their conversation. Tell me the truth. Teresa is your child with Claire, isn't she? I was taken aback. Claire? My mother? Had I misheard her? I know, Mark told me. The day Claire had the accident, they ran some blood tests, and he found out Teresa's blood type didn't match his. Obviously, she's not his biological daughter, and she looks just like you. Now tell me, did you and Claire cheat behind our backs? You used to be in love with her before you married me. So Dad treated me like that because he found out I'm not his own daughter? And Alfred and my mom used to be in love bef before she got married to my dad? Explain to me! Enough! Alfred finally spoke up. I have nothing to explain to you. Hearing footsteps toward me, I rushed to my room, closed the door, then crawled into my blanket, pretending to be asleep. Suddenly, I heard the door open. It was Alfred. Teresa, let's get out of here. I packed a bag and left with my Uncle Alfred. We moved into a small apartment not too far from his house. Even though he took care of me a lot, he never mentioned that day ever again. I didn't dare to ask either. So we just let it slide. He had to be my real dad, right? He just wasn't ready to talk about it yet. I tried to avoid charity as much as possible, but this wasn't always easy as we went to the same school. It wasn't like I was scared of her or anything. It was just awkward. Then one day... I walked along the corridor to see flyers stuck to lockers, doors, windows, and floating around the floor. They all had a picture of my face on them, and scrawled across them was, This fraud is the product of her cheating mom and a married man. Everyone was giving me dirty looks and whispering about me. I panicked and rushed out of there, but I wasn't looking where I was going and bumped straight into a jock, and standing next to him was Charity. Enjoy the fame! These flyers were specially made for you. Right at that moment, my father appeared holding a flyer. He waved it in front of her. What is this? Who allows you to trash the school with this rubbish? Leave Teresa alone. I couldn't cope with my father right now, so I ran off to class. That afternoon, I heard the school speaker announce that everything written on the flyers was lies and charity would be in detention. Once the last bell rang, I just wanted to get home and hide away from the world. But as I walked outside, I saw my dad waiting for me at the gate. I had nothing to say to him. So I ignored him and walked off. Please, Teresa, at least hear me out. I stopped on the spot, then walked over to him. I guess it was time I found out the truth. So, turns out, yes, I'm not his daughter. But I wasn't Uncle Alfred's daughter either. I found this, and it made me feel so guilty, he said. He showed me an artificial insemination certificate file. Turns out after years of trying, my parents went to run some tests, and my dad was diagnosed as infertile. Mom didn't want him to be upset, so she secretly got artificial insemination and gave birth to me. It was never your mom's fault, and I was wrong to treat you like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. A fresh ran of tears streamed down my face with each word I heard from him. Teresa, I'm so sorry that us adults selfishness and bitterness has hurt you. Startled, I turned around to find that Uncle Alfred was already there behind me. I guess he'd come to pick me up, and I didn't notice since I was talking to my dad. He must have heard the whole story. Alfred and I will do anything to make it up to you. Even if you want to find your biological dad, we'll try our best. I looked at him and Uncle Alfred, thinking, there's no need to, as I've already got two amazing dads. Hey, I'm Kirsty, and I have an identical twin sister called Arabelle. We didn't have a normal upbringing, as our mom abandoned us at an orphanage when we were six. We have our mom's dark blue eyes. That's pretty much all I remember about her. I'm not fully sure why she gave us up. I guess she was young and just couldn't cope. As little kids, my sister and I were close. We used to fool the other kids and the nuns into thinking that we were each other. Arabelle always wore a pink bow in her hair, so we'd both wear one and freak the kids out by double-crossing them in the corridors. Those were good times. But when we got older, everything has changed. I started to become green with envy at Arabelle, 
everyone always liked her more than me. The nuns called her Little Cat, and every kid kept surrounding her like she was a sparkling star or something. They all thought she was so sweet and polite. This annoyed me because I knew the real her, and she wasn't sweet at all, if not a completely fake girl, and she just knew exactly what to say and do to get the most from people. Then, when we were 12, a lot had been happening that completely changed our lives. The orphanage had financial problems that could not be saved. Our nuns loved us so much that they didn't want to lose any of us, but they had no choice but to allow the social organization to find us adoptive parents. The nuns didn't want my sister and I to be apart, so they sent us to two families in the same town. But the god of justice must be blind as usual. Arabelle was way luckier than me. She was adopted by a wealthier family. My parents loved me anyway, but, well, she received all the best things, and that was just not fair. We went to the same school, and I was so sick of listening to her bragging. When we were at the orphanage, we used to wear the same kind of clothes, but now things were different. Arabelle always stayed in style wearing the most beautiful clothes. So while although we are identical twin sisters, whenever we stand next to each other, she would be like a queen and I would be a maid. She easily got everything I ever wished for. Princess bed, a large window with a sea view, piano and ballet classes, and an amazing mom and dad. She talked about it all the time and I got sick hearing it. It seemed like all of the greatest things were not enough for her. She didn't appreciate what they gave her and just always wanted more. If I were her, I would enjoy that dream life with gratitude and respect everything I got. Life was so unfair. Why did Arabelle always have the best while a girl like me was suffering from the day I was born? Adopting one part of a twin made our two new families close. My new family was always visiting Arabelle's big house for barbecues and nice dinners. To be honest, I did not want to go there at all. It was not a simple family meeting. It was just an event for her to show up. Her parents were so nice, and just by looking at the way they treated her, I could tell that they loved her so much. They often patted her head and called her puppy. Arabelle acted all sweet. Then, behind their backs, she said this nickname made her feel sick, as she wasn't five. No one seemed to realize the truth. Arabelle was absolutely not as cute as they ever thought. She actually was kind of insolent, haughty, boastful girl, and most of all, she was a fake. I remember one time when her mother's birthday party was taking place. Her mom looked stunning in that gorgeous dress, and people in the room just stayed silent for a while to show their impressing. Arabelle pretended to be cute and gave tons of compliments to her mom, but as soon as her mom turned her back on us, Arabelle whispered to me, Look at her stupid smile. She is thinking that she really is beautiful, while everyone knows that I'm the one who looks stunning here. I was so sick of her double life. She was so lucky living that great life, but she had no appreciation for what she already had. And she was so fake. One time, I tried to unmask her true colors. I tried to tell my parents and our mutual friend about how she'd acted behind their backs, but they never believed me and just told me to stop being mean and selfish. They didn't understand a thing about her real version and even scolded me. I was the one who deserved that life, not that fake loser girl. That was when I decided to make a bigger plan. I wanted to replace Arabelle and live her life. I started staring at her work and copied her handwriting. I practiced imitating her voice. We sounded pretty similar, so this was easy. I secretly followed her and her lame friends at school so that I could learn all about their hobbies and habits. But my family was not as wealthy as theirs. I could only stand outside the restaurant, the clothing store, or the cinema. Watching Arabelle enjoy the good life just made my determination grow. When our families met up, I made an effort to get to know her parents more. Her mom likes playing the piano, and her dad likes taking care of his bonsai trees. Her mom can't eat seafood, and her dad is allergic to peanut butter. I jotted down every little detail about her life in my planning book. There were a lot of things I needed to learn until I was fully confident that I could become a second Arabelle and successfully replace her. But then, something suddenly happened that made me speed up my plan. This boy called Milo I liked at school started flirting with my sister. And she flirted back! She knew I liked him, but this didn't stop her from agreeing to go on a date with him. 
She was such a demon. At this point, I couldn't stand her walking around and stealing all the best things I've ever wanted in my life. I had a plan. Back when I was in the orphanage, there was a man who often came to us and said impolitely to the nuns that they should sell him some children to solve their financial worries. Of course, the nuns refused him and kicked him out. He continued to come over a couple of times, and once he gave us his phone number, saying that if any of us got into trouble, we could find him. Then the nun showed up and threatened to call the cops. Well, that was the last time I saw him. I always kept that number because I knew there would be a day I would need it. And that day finally came. I called him, and we came up with a plan to solve my Arabelle issue. He sent her an anonymous message telling her to come to a secluded corner in the park to find out some juicy gossip about Milo. Of course, my nosy sister agreed. The man promised my sister would be sent to another place to work to help him earn money, and she wouldn't be harmed. I left a letter at home saying I'd had enough of the poor life and I'd found a better place to go. I told my parents not to be sad and not to look for me. I hid in a corner of the park and waited for my sister to appear. Then, when they took her, I could easily hop into her life and replace her. There would be no more Kirsty anymore, as I would perfectly be back as Arabelle. Well, the better version of her. Suddenly, I saw a black car stop in the distance. Two tattooed guys got out of the car. I could see guns in their back. They stopped for a moment to wet a hanky with some liquid thing. This didn't feel right. I knew that this was going way too far. They would hurt my sister, and I was the one who was participating in this sin, and I knew that I would live in guilt for the rest of my life if I ever let it happen. I immediately ran out from where I was hiding, grabbed my sister's hand, and pulled her away. I heard their footsteps right behind us, so I ran as fast as possible to the crowd of people and screamed loudly at the same time to let people around pay attention to us. The other two men probably gave up when we ran into the crowd. After we got back to her home, I told her that I happened to be walking past and overheard the guy saying they were going to kidnap her. Then I just ran to reach her as fast as possible without thinking. She hugged me and thanked me for saving her life. She said that she always thought that I didn't like her, and she used to feel that way about me, too. Wow. That moment she came clear that she used to think that I was just a gross, dirty girl and didn't deserve to be around her, and she from time to time tried to pretend herself in front of me just to make me jealous. She was so sorry for her selfish mind and promised to change her character for me. I also told her that sometimes I became so mean because of envy, but facing this dangerous situation made me realize how much she means to me, and I will not let jealousy blind me anymore. Turns out, living a great life was that simple. We just need to talk straight and openly with each other to solve the problems between us. As for my parents, they read the letter I left them and got upset. We had a good talk, and I realized I was being the ungrateful one. Yes, so they didn't have as much money as Arabelle's family did, but they were good people who cared about me. Arabelle hadn't been the only selfish one. I'd been selfish too. Life's good, and Arabelle and I are getting on better than ever. Still, the guilt from what I planned eats me up. Should I come clean about what really happened, or should I keep it a secret and carry on like normal? I mean, it's not like anyone was hurt, right? I opened the drawer, and aha, uh -huh, there it was. I'd been looking for this magazine for ages. But as I closed the drawer, I noticed something else. A photo hiding under the magazine. There was a woman and two kids in the photo. A boy and a girl. I was so confused. Hmm, who were they? I turned it over and there was a message on the back that said, This is my new number. Call me more often. I miss you so much. Suddenly my mom came in and I was about to ask her about the photo. But she got mad and started screaming at me to get out of the room. Never, ever come into our room again. Do you hear me, Erin? We have private stuff in here. You know the rules. I, I was just looking for the magazine, I said, and quickly tucked the photo inside before running out of her room. Actually, I knew I wasn't meant to go in my parents' room, but I was doing a school essay on sustainability and I'd seen an article in my mom's magazine about it a few days back. 
So I'd search the whole house to try and find it. Eventually, I knew the only place it could be was their room. So I snuck in. Usually their door was locked, so I was in luck. Ever since I was a kid, I had been forbidden to go in there, but I had no idea why. Back in my room, I couldn't stop staring at the photo. Were these my relatives or something? Long-lost cousins? The boy in the pic looked totally like my dad. Oh no. Reading the note behind it again, suddenly I thought this could be another family of my dad. Do you know what I meant? Yes. What if my dad had a secret family? Maybe he'd cheated on my mom and had this whole other secret life. My inner detective was going crazy. There was nothing else for it. I had to get to the bottom of this and find out the truth. I searched online for the phone number and couldn't believe it when a girl the same age as me popped up. I started scrolling through all her photos and suddenly saw one of a young guy holding a baby and the caption said, Miss the old days of being daddy's little girl. This was insane. I was certain the young guy in the photo was my dad and I needed to talk to the girl ASAP. I messaged her and told her we were related. I even sent some photos of me taken with my dad to prove it. I was shaking when I saw her reply pop up. My dad never mentioned you. Not even once. That hurt me so much. I couldn't believe this girl was actually my dad's daughter too. Now, how am I supposed to break this news to mom? She'd freak out. I couldn't bear the thought of seeing this crush her. So, I decided to go clear things up myself first. A few days later, my dad was going on a business trip to Boston. Again. He was always going to Boston. I'd always believed he was just super busy at work. But now I knew the truth as my dad's secret daughter had confirmed she was also from Boston. I mean, of course she was. So, I told my mom I was going to spend the weekend at my friend's house. And the moment my dad left, I jumped in a cab that I'd called and asked the driver to follow him. When we got to Boston, I saw my dad stop outside of a house and then glance around as if he thought he was about to get caught. Then he got out of his car and rang the doorbell. A woman came to open and immediately they started kissing. Then a young girl appeared and, yep, it was exactly the people in the photo. I was shaking so much, I actually dropped the money for the cab. It felt like my dad had punched me in the chest. I was so upset. He had this whole other family that mom and I had no clue about. I couldn't stand it anymore. Mom didn't deserve this. I walked towards the house and was so focused on what I was planning to say to my dad, I didn't even notice a van pulling up right next to me. Suddenly, everything went black, and I realized I had been blindfolded. A huge hand was covering my mouth so I couldn't even scream. I felt tape being put across my lips, sealing them shut. Then someone yanked me backwards and shoved me into some kind of car. Oh my god, was I being kidnapped? Why? Had my dad seen me and now he was trying to cover his tracks? This was like something out of a movie. They even tied me up. After what felt like a billion hours, we finally stopped and I was dragged out of the car into a cold, dark building. Someone took my blindfold off, but it was so dark inside I couldn't really see anything except a single light bulb above my head. The tape across my mouth was pulled off and I was untied. I wanted to run out of there as fast as possible, but I was terrified. Two men dressed in black were standing in the room and one of them glared at me and said, They think they can hide you forever? <laughs> Who are you? I shouted. Where am I? If it's money you want, call my dad. Please, just let me go, I said, in what must have been the shakiest voice ever. Don't worry, we're not going to hurt you. We don't even need money. It's your parents we want. In three weeks, they'll be out of prison. And then they'll need to come here to get you back. Then we can really punish you for knowing too many secrets about us. I had no idea what they were talking about. Prison? My parents aren't in prison. You've got the wrong person. One of the men just laughed and said, It's been 12 years, and yet you still don't know about it. Then he walked off laughing his head off. What? What were they talking about? None of this made any sense. My dad was a businessman, and my mom was a housewife. This was all some big mix-up. It had to be. 
They'd locked me in that dark room. I tried to scream and bang on the door, but no one heard me. Or if they did, they didn't care. The next few days were some of the worst of my life. I didn't think I'd survive. Twice a day someone slipped food under the door, and I spent most of the time trying to think of ways to escape. There was no window, but there was a small air vent, and if I could just open it, I thought I might be able to crawl through and get the heck out of this disgusting, shabby place. Lucky for me, they'd given me a fork to eat with, and slowly I'd been using it to loosen the screws on the grid of the vent. Finally, on the third night, I waited until everything was dead quiet, and I got into the vent. I crawled through and managed to get out. I was at the back of some old abandoned warehouse, and as I stood up to stretch my legs, someone covered my mouth from behind. Oh, no! How had I got caught so quickly? But then I heard a voice. Shh, are you okay? I almost screamed. (gasps) It was my mom. How did you find me? I asked. But she just grabbed my hand and said, Let's get out of here. Then I'll explain. We climbed through a small gap in the fence, and then I saw a black car by the road. I started to panic again, but my mom told me it was for us. And then as we climbed in, she said to the driver, I got her, James. Let's go. It was only then that I finally took a look at my mom and realized what she was wearing. She was in all black and looked like a spy or something. Um, mom, what's going on? My mom bit her lip and said she couldn't hide it from me anymore. What she told me next was unbelievable. Turns out my parents weren't even my real parents. My biological mom and dad used to be members of this mob, but 12 years ago they had been given an impossible task and they refused to do it, so their boss said he'd harm me as their punishment. My parents had no choice but to turn themselves in and ask the police for protection for me. In return, they gave the police some confidential info about the mob. Whoa, I was shocked. So, you're not my mom? My real parents are in prison? I felt like my head was spinning. How could my life get so crazy? Yep, they're in prison. Back then, the police stormed into the mob's headquarters, but the boss had managed to escape. That's why we put you in the protection program, because we knew he'd come search for you. This was too much! I didn't want such a dramatic life! Then I suddenly remembered there was more drama. Mom, um, I found out Dad was cheating on you, so I followed him here to Boston. Did you follow him too? I mean, how did you find me? This was so weird. My mom didn't look sad at all. She said, actually, he wasn't cheating. That woman and those kids are his family. You see, at the time, he and I were the only two people qualified enough to adopt you. So he actually left his family to fake our family life to protect you. It was all part of the protection program. But he missed his family so much. That's why he went back to see them most weekends. I'm so sorry, Aaron. We didn't expect it to turn out like this. When you didn't come home on Sunday, I used the GPS we set on your phone, and that's how I found you. Okay, my head was spinning even more. Not only were they not my real parents, they weren't even a real couple. This was absolute insanity, and all to protect me? Wow. And as it turns out, it worked out pretty well, because by tracking me, they found the new boss's hideout, And now the police had arrived, and he was finally being arrested. As for me and my family, we had to pretend to be a real family. For now. And actually, it wasn't that hard, because I loved them so much. And they'd sacrificed the past 12 years of their life to protect me. I'd be eternally grateful to them. And my biological parents would be out of prison soon, and then I'd be reunited with them. I don't remember anything about them, but they also sacrificed their lives to protect me. So they must be pretty amazing, right? I was sitting in the reception with an ice pack pressed to my head, waiting for my mom to come pick me up. Ugh, that stupid rogue ball during P.E. Oh, there she was, glamorous as always. She rushed over and hugged me, checking if I was okay. Then she guided me out of there and along the hallway. A group of teenage boys stopped dead and stared open-mouthed as we walked by. One even wolf whistled. Even my math teacher, who was walking out of his classroom, started readjusting his tie and waved over at us. No, those reactions weren't for me. They were for my mom. She's just too beautiful to ever be faced by how men act around her. On the way back home, I got a message from my bestie, Minnie. I bet men would all compete to win a date with your mom. She was like a goddess earlier. I giggled to myself. 
the thought of a bunch of adult men competing to win my mom's affection amused me. I couldn't understand why my mom was still single. She's gorgeous, successful, and a really kind person. And I guessed she'd enjoy having a man about the place, right? Okay, so Minnie wasn't being serious, but the more I pondered on it, the better the idea became. So I messaged her back. Tell me more about that contest idea of yours. Then one time, when my mom was away on a business trip, I invited Minnie around. We spent all evening posting about the auditions online and handing flyers out around town. Soon, the applications came flooding in. Oh boy, some were handsome, but some, yeah, they were so not. Um, delete, definitely. We got everything ready to spend hours sifting through all the applicants. Gotta be strict, cause the chosen one had to be perfect like Prince Paris, to match with a woman like my mom, whose name is actually Helen. <laughs> Finally, we whittled them down to a top 10 list, and we invited them along to round one. Fitness is important, right? Well, at least that's what Minnie says. So we set up an assault course at the local park. All the guys showed up including Mr. Swanson, my gym teacher. Uh-oh, awkward. But hey, I suppose he was good-looking and a physically strong man. Firstly, they had to run a complete lap of the field, as stamina was important. Then they had to lift 120 pounds of weights, equal to my mom's weight. She sure needed a man who could lift her over their shoulder like they do in the movies. OMG, watching them warming up was hilarious. One man showed up in this lycra one-piece and started doing jumping jacks, and another guy was doing some weird karate moves. All of them completed the running section. Well, just about. But some of them struggled to lift the weights, including Mr. Swanson, who had turned bright red and was groaning. Minnie and I covered our mouths to hold back our laughs. Farewell, Mr. Swanson. That was for being mean to us in gym class. Finishing round one, we eliminated three men. Too bad, as they were handsome. On to round two. It's not all about brawn. Brains are important too. That was why Minnie and I spent two days noting down all the questions for our Who Wants to Be My Mom's Boyfriend quiz round. My mom deserves a man who knows everything. We set out a row of kid-sized chairs in the backyard. Then we walked along the line and fired questions at them. Suddenly... One man stood up and furiously said to the others, Why are we letting some kids test us like this? Then stormed off. Minnie whispered, Not surprising, really. I saw him scratching his head at the other questions. We then eliminated those with the lowest score, leaving just five potentials to go through to round three. That night, I was about to grab something to eat, and I saw my mom standing in the kitchen. Hmm, she was back earlier than I thought. She was looking down at the pile of profiles on the table with in and out stamps on them. Confused, she asked me, Zara, what is the meaning of this? Mom, we think you've been lonely for a long time. So, Minnie and I are doing a contest to find you a man. I gave my best puppy-eyed look. Actually, tomorrow is round three. It'd be perfect if you could join us for the interview. Please? Mom glared at me and shook her head but I kept insisting until she sighed and said, Fine, I'll come. I howled with joy and hugged her. Bring on round three, the interview stage. Minnie and I asked the questions while Mum, Queen Helen, watched from her throne. The first one, Tyler, waved over at Mum and said, Helen, do you recognize me? My mum just smiled politely. Turned out, Tyler had a big crush on my mum since they were both in high school. Then when Minnie asked him to show us his talent, he ignored her and said to Mom, Oh, Helen, I've never stopped loving you. You remember back then when we... I shouted out, interrupting him. Not impressive enough. Next! The second one stepped in. Simon. Ooh. He was wearing a suit and seemed like a gentleman. Maybe you don't recognize me. Simon spoke up. My mom's smile disappeared. I'm Simon the head of the engineering department in our company. Simon must have had a crush on my mom for a long time, but she sure didn't even know he existed. His talent performance was to help fix two faulty computers in my house. Hmm, useful, but 
honestly, it wasn't rocking enough. Plus, him being my mom's colleague was awkward. Duh! As soon as the third one, James, walked in, Mom sat up with a surprise. Helen, I miss you so much, he sincerely said. Mom immediately motioned me to eliminate him, then got up and went inside. It was revealed that James was her ex-boyfriend from their college days. Okay, creep. Oh well, two guys left. The next one was so dreamy. He looked like he belonged in a boy band. Minnie and I clasped hands excitedly. Hi, I'm Daniel. Nice to meet you ladies. Daniel's smile totally melted Minnie and I. I don't know if you ladies know, but I live on this street. Seriously? How did I not know a handsome neighbor like this? He then took out his guitar and played a song. OMG, this guy deserves straight A's. But he was only 21 years old. That was way younger than my mom. And he was the last one of all. Very handsome and sweet. For his talent, he'd make us cupcakes. These lovely little ones are specially made for you, lovely ladies. He smiled. Oh, oh, how charming. In the end, Minnie and I sat together and discussed our options. Well, the result was quite obvious. I excitedly announced, We've made our decision. My new daddy, the chosen Prince Paris to my mom, Helen, the champion is... Andy! He looked chuffed and grinned over at my mom. Still, my mom maintained that polite smile and remained silent. Yay! This was great! I finally had a father. Moreover, this one makes awesome food. I couldn't wait for their first date. Eek! Now let me tell you, the date went amazingly. Andy took my mom and I to this fancy restaurant in town. He pulled the chairs out for us, ordered food he thought we'd like, then he started serving us the coolest stories ever. He really is a gentleman. If I had a boyfriend, I would want one like him. After we finished, I crossed the street to buy ice cream and caught them hugging. Perfect. Looked like things went well. Oh, Andy, I could already imagine the life where he was family. That night, Mom sat down next to me while I was texting and watching TV. Zara, I'm glad to see you had fun these past few days. I hummed, still texting. But did it ever cross your mind that what you did was for you and not for me? Excuse me? I worked hard to make her happy, and she could say that to me? I took my eyes off the phone and stared at her. Sweetie, you only picked the man you liked the best. It's your choice, not mine. I appreciate what you did, but relationships are not that simple. I tearfully raised my phone and shook it, saying that I already invited Andy over at the weekend to teach me how to cook. Mom smiled. No problem. Andy and I already talked and decided to stay friends. So, this weekend's plan remains the same. I lowered my head and apologized to her. Mom was right. I'd picked my favorite without considering her feelings. But, yeah, it wasn't all bad, as after that, Andy kept coming over most weekends took me to go buy groceries with him, and then cooked for us. He taught me how to cook and bake, and we even chatted about the goofy boys at my school. Seriously, if that Richard wants a chance with a pretty girl like ours, Zara, then he should be stronger, Andy said, while his hands were still cooking gracefully. Yeah, Richard, burn! Speaking of being burnt, ouch! Yes, it was me who had just burnt myself in the oven thinking about all this. Andy rushed over, guided my hand over to the faucet, and ran it under cold water. Oh, jeez. He was so caring and thoughtful. Unlike those childish guys my age. Soon it was my sweet 16th. And of course, Andy was the chef for dinner. Mom and Minnie just had to light up the birthday candles. Then, as I watched Andy through the candlelight, I knew I couldn't lie to myself anymore. I was in love with him. I spent days planning for the best confession to him. Only, before I could tell him how I felt, Mom told me, Andy just called me and said he'd been offered the head chef job in New York. He's leaving next week. What? No! Why? It was Andy, the first love of my life. That was so unfair. We didn't get any chance to see him until the day he boarded. Mom and I went to the airport to see him off. I couldn't bear watching him go. 
so I glued my eyes on the floor while he was still excitedly chatting with my mom. Zara, use what I taught you to take good care of your mother, okay? Andy winked and patted my head. I couldn't help myself any longer. I burst into tears, hugged him, and sobbed out, Andy, I love you. Please don't go. Don't leave me. I can't live without you. For a moment, the whole airport, including my mom, was stunned. All eyes were on me. Andy immediately pushed me away, clearing his throat and said, <clears throat> Zora, you're a lovely, pretty, sweet girl. You will find a suitable boyfriend. Then he turned to mom. Best wishes to you both. Bye, Helen. Bye, Zara. And I watched him walk away with tears streaming down on my face. Well, it's been six months since then, and I eventually realized that my feelings for Andy were just a teenage confusion. I did love him, yes, but it was more like admiring and respecting him as a father figure. Anyway, I do have a new dad now, but it was my beloved mom's choice. His name is Harris, and he might not be as good a cook as Andy, but he's a nice guy, and he makes her happy. And of course, we still keep in touch with Andy. Both his career and his love life are doing really well in the Big Apple. I've learned my lesson. Life's full of choices, some good and some not so good. But sometimes, however much we want to, we can't make choices for other people. Instead, we just have to take a deep breath and let them make their own. High school has started, and it's going pretty well. I'm currently seeing this very cute guy in math class. Guys my age are not that bad, to be honest. Minnie's not so bad on herself, either, as she's now dating that musician Daniel and enjoys touring around with him whenever he plays at concerts. What a happily fulfilled ending for everyone, isn't it? On my very first day of high school, I showed up in my extreme goth girl attire as every other day. I felt good, but unfortunately, the teacher didn't appreciate my look, as she gave me this disgusted stare and blurted out, How peculiar. Excuse me? So how do you define normal? How come being your true self is abnormal, but it's totally fine to live a fake, boring life just to fit into this judgmental society? The whole class gasped and stared at me. As for the teacher, I'd rendered her speechless. I guess word got around, as at recess this red-haired goth boy smiled at me, then said, Hey, it's Miranda, right? Do you want to join my group? Well, no need to ask twice. This guy was cute. And everyone in this group was goth, too. This was where I belonged. They share my views on how the media's unattainable standards of beauty are fake, and how pathetic everyone is for striving to look like mass-produced dolls. Ugh. I like them. Actually, I didn't have many friends. You see, as soon as I discovered my true identity at 13 and started dressing this way, my old friends ditched me. People are always so quick to judge and don't gel well with others that are different. It's so lame. But whatever. Those bland blunders could never understand my effort to stand out and be true to myself. The only girl who stuck around was Isabel. She's been my best friend since we were six. And my black lipstick and chokers didn't scare her off. My parents just thought I was going through a rebellious phase, so they let me do what I wanted. Only my older sister Harper was bitter about it. Oh, please! Biologically and technically, you are not a goth. You're an American who likes the gothic style. Ha! <laughs> Jealous much? You see, Harper was your standard girl-next-door type. Just like everybody else. Yawn. Whatever. As it's her business. I don't care. But please don't force me to be like her. Ugh! Okay, back to school things. From that day onward, I joined the goths. They were all very cool. Especially the red-haired guy, Ralph. The more time I spent with him, the more I knew we were made for each other. So, one time, I confided in Isabel about my feelings for him and told her I was planning to ask him to be my boyfriend. Are you sure? It's just you haven't known him long and you don't know how he feels about you. Oh, bless. Isabel was being her usual sweet, caring, worried self. But come on, this was a sure bet. It's okay, Izzy. I'm the coolest one, not only in my group, but also in this school. 
There's no way he can turn me down. No. Ralph's answer cut right through me without any hesitation. I haven't even finished my love confession. Ouch. Seeing me dead still and mouth wide open, Ralph continued, Look, Miranda, your style is so cool, and I know you're one of us, but honestly, whenever I talk to you, I think it's just so tasteless. Besides, I'm already dating Aaron, so we should just be friends. Tasteless? What did he mean, tasteless? And OMG, Aaron? Unbelievable. Her goth makeup and outfits were no way near as good as mine. What did she have that I didn't? Furious, I stomped home, rushed to my room, and screamed into my pillow. On hearing this, Harper hurried in and asked me what was up. I needed to talk to someone, so I blurted it all out to her. Wow, she raised her eyebrows. Rude. Still, she paused, scratching her chin. Uh Uh-oh. I know she always does that thing whenever she's about to say something mean. You know, that Ralph guy does have a point. I mean, instead of spending three hours a day applying endless layers of makeup, you could use that time to learn how to be less boring. She shrugged. What? Shut up! Get out of my room! I furiously pushed her out and slammed the door. But, come to think of it, what if the other kid stopped being friends with me? And not because of my look, but due to my tastelessness. Nah, that can't be the case. Harper was just being her usual ridiculous self, so I stayed loyal to myself throughout high school and continued to live life my way. No one can make me change my mind, ever. Yeah, I know senior year is important, which is why I made a conscious effort to attend the college enrollment fair. After a while of wandering around, I found myself drawn to the social science section of one university. This was it. This is what I wanted to major in. This was so exciting! I'd finally found something else amazing besides the goth lifestyle. That night I asked Harper to take a photo of me to send with my application file. She gave me this dirty look and replied, You really think they'd want to interview a student looking like they belong in Dracula's castle? No, she did not just say that. How disrespectful! Why do people care so much about appearances? You pick someone due to their caliber, not the surface. Well... If looks are not so important, why don't you just quit being angry, get changed, and just take a simple photo? Harper raised her voice. Ugh, arguing with her was pointless. So I ran back to my room and locked myself in there for two whole days. Ugh, I hated this world! I had a lot of thinking time, which made me realize I do really want to major in social science. So I decided to listen to Harper, remove my makeup, fix my hair, and borrow her clothes for the picture. Oh, My God! No, I can't even look in the mirror. I looked horrible. But Harper thought otherwise. I told her to just take the dumb photo. But she ran off and dragged along my parents, who cooed and clapped on seeing my new look. You look so beautiful, honey! My mom held her chest. Were those tears in her eyes? Oh, man, this was so lame. This wasn't me. I'm not some insignificant, boring-looking girl. Ugh! As soon as Harper took the photo, I darted toward the door, desperate to return to my goth look. Please, Miranda. My parents both grabbed my arms. You look so much better this way. But this isn't me. If I don't stay goth, then I'll be losing myself. I shook them off. A few weeks later, I got a reply from the university. I had got through to the online interview stage. Whoa. But this time, I wouldn't change myself. During the interview, one professor asked me about my social experiences, such as part-time jobs or social volunteer services. Um, I hadn't done any. I'd thought of that once in a while, but due to my goth look, I didn't get to work anywhere. I admitted that to the professor and proudly announced, Being goth is my true identity. A few weeks later, I received their response email. Harper, Isabel, and my parents gathered around me in the living room, but, oh no... I muttered out once I opened the email. They rejected me. I stood up and tearfully ran back to my room, while Isabel followed me. Don't worry. Isabel sat down next to me and rubbed my arm. They have another enrollment in the autumn. So you still have a few more months to prepare. I don't need it anymore. Just leave me alone. I must have freaked her out as she quietly left after that.
The next day, I was so bummed out, so I went to see my goth friends. Surely my own kind would make me feel better, right? People are ridiculous, but no one can stop us from being ourselves, Ralph heroically said. Well, I didn't feel any better, but at least there was someone on the same page with me. Still in a frustrated mood, I later on skipped dinner and went straight to my room. Harper then entered my room and talked to me in a serious tone. Stop sulking. I've seen that email and your profile. Here's the ugly truth. They didn't reject you because you're a goth. They rejected you because... You're just a bland person with below average grades and no social experience whatsoever. I threw my pillow at her, demanded she leave my room right now and never come back. But that night I couldn't sleep. Her words were bugging me. I don't know, maybe she was kind of right. I mean, I guess I could do more to help my case, as I knew I really, really wanted to study that major at that university. So the next day I started looking for a part-time job. But everywhere required this gross uniform and decent look. Jeez, come on, I just can't. I felt so terrible being something that I'm not. I was about to give up when Isabel came to me and said, Be strong. Think about your dream college and your future. She patted my back. This is just temporary, okay? What a sweet friend she is. All right, gotta get back on my feet. I patiently kept looking, and finally, a cafe accepted me as a waitress. Of course, no goth look, though. Ugh. One evening after work, I was about to go home when I ran into the goth group. And hey, guys! I cheerfully greeted them. What's the event tonight? Noticing their confused look, I said, It's me, Miranda. They burst out laughing. Seriously? Miranda, is it really you? Then some of them pulled out their phones and started taking pictures. My Instagram is gonna love this. While the others kept ridiculing me, this was heartbroken. I thought they were my people. Why didn't they give me even a second to explain? Now it turns out, they were the most judgmental people ever. What a toxic group of friends. I wasn't going to waste my time hanging out with them anymore. Lesson learned. Over the next few months, I focused on working at the cafe. And I joined a group of active young people, handing out food for homeless people and helping nurses at old people homes. I'd experienced so many new things, and to be honest, I got used to this mediocre look. Actually, there's this one guy in my volunteer group. He's called Roger, and I may have a slight crush on him. At first, I didn't even notice him, because he looks normal. Basic haircut, t-shirts, jeans, and sneakers. Until one time, in a nursing home, I was struggling with this very bitter and difficult old lady who was accusing me of stealing her slippers. Then Roger, with his gentle nature and soothing voice, slid in and diffused the situation. On top of that, he was an amazing storyteller, as he always mesmerized everyone around, including me. Ah. <sighs> okay, so looking normal didn't mean someone was boring. Yeah, I know the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, it turns out that saying is 100% true. In early October, Harper helped me apply again. And guess what? I successfully passed the online interview and received an offer email. My family was in seventh heaven. My parents couldn't stop the happy tears. While Harper just proudly smiled at me, and Isabel hugged me tightly. We even went on vacation to celebrate. It was terrific. Now, I still love my gothic look, but at the same time, I love my natural look too. I've realized that identifying yourself by how you look on the surface is nonsense, and so is judging people by the way they look. Having an interesting life and being beautiful is not just about obsessively focusing on how you appear. It comes from within. Wait, is that Roger over there? Oh no, he's coming this way. He's waving at me. Perhaps this is my chance.